Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next? Look no further. The personal injury attorneys at Phillips Law Firm are here to help. Phillips Law Firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down. That's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible. Don't wait any longer. Call now, 1-800-JUSTICE, or visit justiceforyou.com. Therapy is known to be extremely helpful, but have you ever tried eavesdropping on someone else's problems? Listen to the new podcast, Say More with Dr. Sheila, starring Amy Poehler as the world-renowned self-proclaimed couples therapist. You know, it's funny, as I was making the appointment to come today... I'm sorry, I made the appointment. I made the appointment. I booked booked the appointment. Listen to Say More with Dr. Sheila on the free Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. And away we go. Welcome to season 18, episode number 3,975. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, the Ted Smith, and my car. Our men's row. On tap today, the lovely Taryn Daly joins us once again. We will sit and spin. And today, we whip out the pumpkin spice with 10 fall songs to start the season. Mm-hmm. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, a men's room shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with tea. Click, clack. Drink and drunk. All right, here we go. A man on honeymoon sends naked pic of his wife to his entire contact list. Meanwhile, a guy brings a loaded gun in a carry-on and says it's something that his wife must have missed. Tennessee man attacks girlfriend's son after refusing to pay him for doing yard work. Sheep wander into a greenhouse and all of them come out wearing a very big smirk. Drugs! And a drug dealer calls the cops on himself. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards is 79 years old, and based on his lifestyle and hard partying ways, no one knows how he survived for 79 years, but here he is. Now, oddly enough, Keith now enjoys a clean lifestyle, or so he says. He gave up heroin in 1978. 28 years later, in 2006, he gave up cocaine, but only because it affected his pain medication after he fell out of a coconut tree. And then more recently, in 2019... Keith gave up cigarettes and his favorite cocktail, the Nuclear Waste. And in case you're wondering, Nuclear Waste is a mix of vodka and orange soda. Not Tang Ted, orange soda. (laughs) Now, he hasn't completely given up alcohol altogether, but he doesn't drink quite as hard. Now, on the flip side, country singer Ashley McBride, she's given up alcohol. In fact, she's been sober for over a year, but she waited until now to tell anyone so the people wouldn't make a big deal about it. But she's not alone. Bradley Cooper, he's been sober since he was 29. Tom Holland, who's 27, he's given up drinking, as has Jessica Simpson, Eminem, Robert Downey Jr., Rob Lowe, and Daniel Radcliffe, who says he developed an alcohol addiction while filming the Harry Potter movies. Let that sit in there for a minute. Drunk magicians, Mike. (laughs) Scourge of the planet. But it's not all drugs and booze. People give up all kinds of things for one reason or another. 
Drugs, booze, sugar, sports, video games, social media, whatever. But today, we want to know. Today's question is simply, what did you stop doing? And why did you stop doing it? To be a part of the big show, call 206-803-ROCK. You can like The Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send your emails to The Men's Room at KISW.com. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. All the tells away we go. Welcome to Season 18, Episode number 3,975. What a large and a charged program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. Once again, we welcome in the lovely Taryn Daly, and we will sit and spin... Safe to say that uh, fall has officially arrived in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, wasting Today, no time letting us know. We have ten fall songs to start the season. Yay. Yay. Songs about the leaves turning and the foliage and everything else coming up. Kind of a more of a, a gentle sit and spin today. I don't think anyone talks about with fall. It's always leaves, right? Yeah. Leaves and pumpkin spice. And I feel like that's it. Well, I mean, the here leaves, it's just because it's the only time of year they look that color. Yeah, that's true. Good it's point. a little tougher in the Northwest because there's so many evergreen trees. That's a good point. Yeah. But right, like, I mean, you know, you grew up in upstate New York or whatever. I mean, oh, it, yeah. is, it is gorgeous. Until they fall and your father says at 10 years old, here's a rake. Mm-hmm. Like, son of a bitch. Man, I hated that. I, I really that, did. That, that More was, than uh, mowing the lawn, for whatever reason, raking leaves just pissed me off. I don't know yeah, why. Because yeah. now I don't mind. I got to the point where I just uh, run them over with a lawnmower. And turn and them then, into mulch. And then suck them all up into a bag. And then pretty much just did it that way. Like I was cutting grass. Just run over them like five or six times. Can... Put the bag on the back and then eventually just, you know, take all the shreds of leaves and throw and them in a bigger yard bag. I told you, my dad did it with me. I think Thrill did it with his kid. Get him a leaf blower. Oh, dude. Well, I was got more than happy blower. every fall to go out there. It's the first time my kids have proven useful outside. <laughs> you know, it, it usually if I'm outside doing stuff, if you're like, hey, do you want to help? Like they disappear just right before you. Mm-hmm. Poof. Got the leaf blower. My man just stands at the ready. He'll stand there for 20 minutes and watch me do stuff just so he can fire that bitch up and yeah. blow the leaves. Yep. yep. That's, 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 that's Which fact. actually is kind of annoying because I enjoy doing it. <laughs> I mean, you never want to have to do it. Now I finally get a toy that's fun, and now you are willing to help because it's fun. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ten fall songs to start the fall season. Coming up with a lovely Taryn Daly. We'll sit and spin. And today, as we do every Monday through Friday, man, lucky you, you get more Men's Room exclusively on Odyssey and the Odyssey app. Join us for the Men's Room Happy Hour coming up here at uh, 6 o'clock. Keep in mind, there's a reason that channel is labeled explicit based on the language and subject matter we use at times. Also on that channel, uh, there basically just is a 24-hour loop of our show. Yeah. They put different segments on there and, and run that all the time. And then we go live at uh, 6 on the Men's Room Happy Hour channel. I'll download the app. It's free. Then look for the Men's Room. Uh, search for that. And when you do, you'll find all things Men's Room on one page. From all of our daily podcasts to the weekly podcasts that we put out. Men's Room Radio is on there. The channel where we get to pick our own music. And the Men's Room Happy Hour channel. We'll see you coming up here at uh, 6. Go over some picks. From the NFL football weekend, yeah, 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 yeah. we did much better. We're getting better as the weeks go on. As far as, yeah. Yeah, wins and losses, it's getting a lot better. Uh, Ted started out hot, obviously, but he hasn't really cooled down. All right. We're getting a little bit better. Uh, so either way, we'll go over the picks from the uh, from the NFL weekend coming up on the Men's Room Happy Hour. And today on the question, what did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. Let's go back to blowing leaves, to raking leaves, to cutting grass. Mm-hmm. Now, when I uh, lived on the East Coast, I grew up and I was basically, from the time that I was eight, seven years old, I was in charge of the yard where I grew up. Yeah. It was a sizable yard, probably at least an acre, if not three-fourths of an acre. It was two sloping hills that mm-hmm. made it a little bit more difficult as far as the rain and other things. There were trees everywhere. It was a big yard. There were bushes. It was my job. Every week... To go out there and take care of the yard. One thing or another. Whether it was pulling weeds, uh, you know, shoveling snow on the driveway, uh, raking leaves, bagging leaves, cutting grass. You name it, I was in charge of all of it. Bringing firewood in, all of those different things. And I did that up until the time where I moved out when I was 18 years old. Then I got an apartment. I was in an apartment for probably up until 1995 was the first year that I bought a home. So I bought a home that was like $100,000 in lovely Pasadena, Maryland. Is it lovely? This, I mean, you know, you know, I've been there. Yeah, it's, it's Pasadena, Maryland. It's some not, okay parts. There, not, there are. Yeah, on the water, there's not, it's not Pasadena, California. It's Pasadena, Maryland. It's all by this hole. <laughs> it's got tons of I oak trees. I defend it. My cousin lives there. Yeah, it's not, I mean, they're, they're decent bars. You're, you're not wrong. A couple cool bars. Either way, now I'm back to it again. Now I've got a leaf blower. Yep. Now I've got a lawnmower. 
Now I've got a weed eater. Now I've got a shovel. Now I've got all this stuff, and it's in the garage. Then I move to a different location, a different house, with even more trees and more shrubbery and more weeds and more Mm -hmm. everything else. And when we got this job offer, I told my wife one thing. I said, look, I've spent the majority of my time on the weekends of my life, with the exception of a very small window there where I was in school and doing other things anyway with a job and everything else. I have been uh, working in the yard my entire life. The first place that we get here, we rent, we buy, whatever, it is not going to have a yard. I do not want to spend my weekends. I am done doing yard work. I am done cutting grass. I'm done maintaining a lawnmower, a weed eater. I'm tired of it. I am done. I am never. What did you do last weekend? Uh, last weekend, I actually had to go out. I have hedges in the front of my yard. <laughs> we didn't tell you five yard and, bags. And, but listen, listen. <laughs> I'm just saying. I've lived in that place since 2005. Yeah. I've owned, I have never, ever cleared out this, this shrubbery line before. Yeah. And they were coming to stain my fence. And they could not get to the fence because the shrubbery was all pushed up against it. and was eating so into forest the fires start miles. So, uh, all right. so I went out there and put three bags into, a, uh, into the yard bags. Had a uh, wolf spider jump up my pant leg and bite me on the inside of my thigh. And I saw him go up there and I was like, don't bite me, don't bite me. And I tried to shake him out, man. He just lit me up. It still hurts. It's been over still a week. Hurts. It's been over a week. It still itches and is rash. Have you tried any Spider-Man stuff? Hurts like hell. I haven't yet, man, but I'm ready to jump off a building. I mean, it's a, I'm, I'm ready to give it a shot. Maybe start with trying to climb a wall first. Yes. Yes. Start there. But, Work your way up. But I got rid of what I what I what I what, what I moved, Miles just do? He just jumped the hell out of the window. Man. When I moved from that house, I strategically went around to all of the neighbors that I liked and disposed of all my things. I had a really nice lawn boy lawnmower, push mower. I gave that to my neighbor. Mm-hmm. I also gave him my gas weed eater. It was a two stroke, pain in the ass. I gave a snow blower away to another neighbor. I basically my my rakes for my leaves, my snow shovels, I gave them all away. Because once we came out here for our first visit, a guy named Bruski, who was driving us around, uh, basically he summed it all up. Like, yeah, you don't need to shovel rain. Yeah, so thank God I didn't bring any of that yeah. stuff because he was not wrong. He's from Boston. Yeah, so he, we said, does he, it he, rain he, as much as they say? He's like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, but you don't have to you shovel don't, rain. Have to shovel I'm like, rain. you know what? Th- those are insightful words. And after all that time, I determined I will never, ever live in a location where I need to do any type of yard work or yard maintenance because that is just not how I want to spend my weekends. I'd rather be doing other things and enjoying my time than the three to four hours seemingly that went into it every weekend. See, I actually enjoy so I, it, man. I, I, well, I know you do. I didn't. But I have kids in the house. And I, I do think, to a degree, that plays into it, right? Because by the time you start doing yard work, at least here, it's not even so much spring because the weather still sucks. But summer hits, you get out there. Well, in summer... Now the kids are around 24-7. You know, there's nothing mm-hmm. better than giving them a kiss when they go to school and giving them a kiss when you come home. When they're just there all day, stinking and giving the attitude, yeah. it's like, so yeah, I'm going to go outside. outside and work. I battled moles. Uh, yeah. The, the worst was... To God. That's right. Not, it's not like you're doing no. something unproductive. I'm so being like, productive. Right, I'm outdoors. You're out the house. You know what I mean? But it and also it, eats up part of the day. Right. right. A large <laughs> choice. You're right. It is very enjoyable. It is very peaceful when you have a family. But if I did not have kids in the house, I think it'd be like, hey, babe, do you want to go to the bar? You want to do right. outdoor Let's drinking? Do it would be else. a much different... Yes, the yard would be overrun. I'll tell you what we, where we went wrong. So we bought this house, decent sized yard, not particularly big. But we both agree because both of us are like, man, I don't feel like mowing the lawn. So we put all this effort in. You know, we dug out all these parts of the yard, pin and planters. We got all these different. Now plants. you're just pulling weeds. Dude, it, don't make <laughs> this mistake, all right? The amount of work you have to do. Because I'm like, with a lawn, you, you just blow over it. Just cut the damn thing. Right. Well, now, with all these freaking flowers. You got to get know, under there. You got to pull man, all the weeds out. It's, it's edge unbelievable. The beds. We really did not think this out. No, I'm like, I, we I, 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 I did the same thing myself. Again, I, I, I battled bamboo for years. That would just We just did that. You have no idea how quickly that comes in. It's it's a miracle weed. Mm-hmm. And it's it's hard. Party as hell, and as soon as you think you've got it, just even you're wrong. You don't. You, you can walk out there. I, I remember walking out two days after clearing bamboo, and big purple shoots were coming out of my lawn that were at least a foot and a half, two feet high. And by the next day, and they were they were yeah. inch around. I mean, they were inch in diameter. They were. This stuff is insane. So I had to battle that. It would eat into my fence line. I'd spend all my time outside during the week, and, and it was hot and humid in uh, that area of the yeah. country. You just sweat. Bees the entire time. There's bugs everywhere biting you. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. And since that point in time, for the most part, I have done some very small projects that needed to be done. I have I, I stopped doing yard work, and that was the reason why. 
Yeah, I'm, like never, said, I'm never doing it again. But the kids, I enjoy it. See, I would do the yard work for you. Like, hey, man, got no problem. And now I'm pretty mm-hmm. good at it. Just my biggest issue is this, all right? So I will go out. Typically, I will get outside before my wife does, all right? So like during the summer, get outside, man. I pull up all these weeds, and I am proud of myself, right? I can't wait for her to walk outside so she can see what her handy husband's done. And probably three times a year, every year, and, and I try my best. This is the comment I get. Did you pull those flowers out of that bed? I'm like, that look like weeds. Those were flowers. Why did you leave that? Well, that looks like a flower. She's like, that's a goddamn weed. I'm like, look, I can't tell the difference, all right? Stop buying flowers that look like weeds, and maybe we should stop growing weeds that look good. You know, so I... I yeah. It's look, like one we, area we def- of we the def- house. We define... It's like a rat, right? If you hit a squirrel with your car, uh-huh. you would feel terrible. I don't know if terrible you is the right feel word. Terrible. You, you feel would, bad. You feel, feel bad. bad. If a rat ran out in front of your car, you don't give a crap. You'll <laughs> run it over and you'll be like, yeah, I killed that rat. Well, they're both living things. We just determine what we like and what we don't like. Same with plants. You know, a weed is a naturally occurring thing. We just determined in our realm that they weren't the plants that we wanted to keep around. I disagree because clearly with my skills, I have made this determination, hey, this is a good looking weed, right? Mm-hmm. I don't it has this nice looking flower. Babe, I just assumed that you planted it. She's like, No, I planted the thing next to it. I'm like, Well, no offense. I pulled them because they were ugly. I did not pull them to be mean, but I figured they were weeds because this pretty thing here, yeah. you're telling me it's weed, and those ugly ass oh, things, you spent money yeah, on that. Driving a, all driving to Pullman, look at all the lovely uh, flowers in the median and, and, how, and how beautiful. They're weeds. Right. <laughs> They're weeds. They're just weeds. That's what I'm saying. Flower on. It's a weed. It, it, it is beautiful. It'll make you sneeze. But it's, sure. it's a weed. I was going to say, it also depends on the size of your lawn. Like, when I was a landscaper, the bulk of our business was people, just personal homes. Sure. You know? And, like, some people want a nice lawn, but they just don't have time to do it. Or, or like you, they don't want to do Look, it. Look, you yeah. have, so you and just, have but the I'm, money to pay But you also have pro stuff. Like, when you roll in, man, you're not having to... You might have to do a little bit of maintenance on this stuff, but those are really nice stand-up lawnmowers. Did you have like, a stand-up lawnmowers? I think it would... I think oh, it'd be, yeah. I think it will be fun. How fun? Well, I mean, it's got the little Velky on the back. Yeah. That's what you call that thing that attaches. Yeah, if yeah. you want to use it, I never liked them. Because, remember, those those professional ones, they run. You move them and turn them by bricks. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they're just running they're just forward. They just go. Yeah. Like, okay. Once you put it into gear, they go. So I was never a huge fan of that Velky unless it was like... Trying to remember, like Brian Westbrook, who played for the Eagles. Yeah. He still lived in PG County, had a massive house. He went to high school with Bernie. We, his lawn was big enough where you pretty much had, had to put to that thing on. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? See, but that, but that you're right. But some of the yards we would do, like sometimes we would just do like, like my, like my dad, right? The last few years, that lawn would get way out of control, right? Sure. I'd be like, Bernie, hey, go over that, right? And I mean, that would take them two minutes. Mm-hmm. Right, to, right, to get it done. So you're right. Like a lot of it was that because people like lawns and lawns are yeah. great. Look, man, Dog, I play golf all the time. Kids, right? cornhole, the, 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 the machines they used to cut the golf course. I'm like, that would be a fun way to spend the day. Just out there, just with these big ass machines that fly. And mm-hmm. I can deal with that. I just don't like walking with a lawnmower for days and making like a small little strip and then turning it around and doing again, doing it turn, again and again and again. And then what do I do? Now I'm out there. Now, now I'm watering. Now I'm, uh, it's dry in the summer. Now I'm watering this because I, I put down the Scots. I'm on the four four season system of this crap that I'm laying down in my yard because why do I care that my yard is green? Because my neighbor's yard's green on both sides. You have to do that, and man. I've got the poopy brown yard in the middle. So I mean, look, to- Bertie still owns that company. He's got 20-some trucks. I don't know that he's cut his own lawn in 20 years. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he, he pays his, his own guys. He refuses to. Yeah, he's like, the hell with that, man. Well, when you cook, what? did you go home and make yourself dinner? No. And when it's, we get exactly. off the radio, I don't feel like talking. You know what I mean? It's weird. Like, if that's it's your job, like you said, you're a janitor, took pride in your work. Correct. When you got home, you weren't cleaning this. No. It could be sloppy or dirty of a house. <laughs> I didn't care. No. They weren't paying. Nobody no. pays you to clean up your own house, unfortunately. I know. Unless you're a child. So our question, what did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROD. <laughs> I did not see mowing the lawn coming out first. Well, look, man. I, I just, set up we just brought it up and I thought, this. But that's one thing. I've consciously made a decision. Like, I could have bought a house with a lawn. Sure. It, it, well, I don't know how big the lawn would have been. I don't know what I could have afforded. I mean, I just bought a two-bedroom condo. But at the same time, I just knew I did not want to spend my time that way. But I mean, like, but but Ted, I, I understand your point. Like drugs, booze, my house is like, I ain't mowing the lawn, you sons of bitches. But on that tip, I won't eat wheat bread. I won't do it. We grew up with wheat mm-hmm. bread. Sounds stupid. Yeah. I, I have refused through my entire adulthood to buy wheat bread. If you only have wheat bread at your restaurant, like, hey, man, we ran out of sourdough, white, whatever. 
I'll get something get up. Get an English muffin. I, just, I mean, straight up, man. That's all I had. I hated wheat bread. I told my parents every day that I hated wheat bread. They're like, well, get a job. Didn't feel like doing that, so I ate wheat bread. But, like, mm-hmm. I'm not eating wheat Even bread. Even if I had a party in my house where there's a, a, t- a t- table bar set up. Typically, you'd have, like, a two-liter bottle of ginger ale, two-liter bottle of Sprite, Coke, whatever. I'm yeah. Like, no, no, no. All cans. I'm never... Ever. Two liter bottle because I lived on generic two liter bottle soda that went flat in two days, and, and I yeah. could not stand it. And I made yep. a promise to myself as a child that when I was old enough to buy my own stuff and I had a job, that never ever would I buy a two liter bottle of soda. God forbid a three liter. Which that those sucked. That yeah. was a day, and a good fit in the damn fridge. All of that stuff, I, I made a conscious decision that that was never going to be a part of my life. Do you know what ruined me on two liter sodas? All right, so. Nobody likes to do it in front of other people, but we all know damn well. Everyone in the house is asleep. You want a sip of milk. You're not pouring a glass. No. You take the card and you tip it up to your mouth, right? I know this happens with soda. Just understand, while no one confesses to doing it, uh, much younger, still living at home. My brother's still at home. This is pre-college. He had a pension for Fritos. And I remember, okay, so fine. He all the fr- I don't dislike Fritos, but obviously he likes them a great deal. Still does. I go to pour myself. A glass of soda, just one random afternoon, and I take my first sip, and it tastes like Fritos. And I almost gagged, man, and I was so pissed off at him. I'm like, hey, man, mm-hmm. I know you're swigging out of the, the, the two-liter bottle. No, man, I wouldn't do that. Dad. Brother, listen to me. You better hope Dad doesn't take a sip of this because <laughs> it tastes like Fritos. And then there's this weird pub. Uh, does it? I said, yeah, you're the one who eats all the Fritos. So either mm-hmm. you or Dad did it, but I know how Dad is. It's unlikely that Tim, man, it tastes like if Dad takes a sip, of this soda, because he liked RC Cola, right? Uh, not Coca Cola, not Pepsi. My man had to have RC. It's not bad. It, it's not bad. But if Dad takes a sip of this and he tastes your Frito ass backwash in there, you know it's going to be your ass. So basically, uh, he and I, we just chugged down the rest of the soda. I'll he was that paranoid that my father would be like, I, I, "God damn it!" I, I like Fritos a lot, and I do like the chili cheese Fritos. I think that's a really good step up to the game. But the other day, I just bought the regular plain barbecue Fritos. Yeah, that they had before that. All right. Just barbecue blasted. My God, man. They're good. Fritos are, Fritos are underrated. I How long did you taste them in your mouth after you ate them? They're like Cheetos. They're just a special treat that I give myself every once in a while. And I, I know why it's a treat, because if I had a whole bag of them, I would eat the entire bag. So I feel like, I yeah. I buy the little uh, lunch. Yeah, buy the, I've been stealing them from my kids, a little snack. So like Fritos, especially the scoop, just shows up when there's dip around. Oh, yeah. well, I, that, that's my go-to. Yeah. That or a wheat thing. What did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROD. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. What did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROD. I'm not going to go off on a tangent here, Steve. I'm going to make this quick. Oh, you're already done. Roses. Hallmark cards. Done. How do you mess up a Hallmark card? Done. If my mom mom wants a card, sure. That's it. How can you mess up a card? I the said, flowers look, I no, get I, don't look, be creative with colors on roses because women know what they the mean and we do not. Never explain the situation that I tend to find myself in. It doesn't what do reflect. Mean? The words do not reflect. It's the like way Valentine's Day. It says I don't care. Happy Valentine's. I say this. Don't write we, anything in the card. Just sign your name. Yeah. I don't care if you take the money that I was going to spend on that and you burn it. As long as we get heat out of it. Right. I, I don't care. We can waste the money any way you want. That is the biggest waste of money ever. I would rather blow it any other way. If you want to order five orders of mozzarella sticks and make me watch you eat it for two and a half hours, I'm in. If that's how we spend the money, just no cards, no flowers. How do you mess up cards? I've seen the card go from the hand, open it up, read the inside of the card, go, that's nice, boom, right in the recycling. You're so, buying the wrong card. I told you, my no. wife now, man. You buy a card that has nothing to do with the day you're commemorating. Okay, but that's So fine. Valentine's Day, it was... It's a joke. ...with deepest sympathies. I don't know if it's a joke, because it literally said with deepest sympathies. But she laughed her ass off. And now I get birthday cards that have nothing to do with my look, birthday. Look, it, I, look, it makes the I card will, interesting. I will buy a bushel of whatever they are, flowers at a farmer's market or whatever, if you okay. like that. Whatever the hell they are. We call a bushel of flowers. A bushel I can flowers. already see how you go wrong whatever with Whatever the hell Hey, can I get a, a bushel of flowers? They start stinking after like two or three days. And the water gets all brown and it's all nasty. And then you got to throw replace them. it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, Mike makes a good point. I'm talking roses. Never, ever again in my life. I'm red, man. Look, I know I'm turning all the ladies on by saying no cards, no roses. But I'm telling you, man, if you want to date me, just know no cards, no no roses. F that. Sorry. I want to see you on The Bachelor. 
I gave you a rose, no, but I don't do no, that. You can't, but no. you can't say that right now. I'll give you a ring pop. How's that? <laughs> I don't like this flavor. You'll, you, right. I mean, you, you get you, that wrong. Something to suck on. You know? Oh, come on. <laughs> can't do anything with roses. You just look at them. Ah, they like they open. Sometimes they dry them out and like to keep them for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. be surprised. Mm. I know. Yeah. See, I have a... Uh, do you? Not my world. <laughs> All right. I'm lucky. I have rose bushes in front of the house. Now, we did not plant them. The guy that lived there before us did, so they're big. So I'm like, if you want roses, go to the living room window and look right outside. There they are. Seriously, I have not, I have not bought roses. And I'm like, why would I do that? They're literally sitting outside Do you the sing house. every rose has its thorn to it when you walk My outside? God, no. Because you're the only one I know that has them. I hate that song. But uh, to Brett Michaels' credit, to his credit, I hate them. I don't hate the man. I hate everything about him without hating him, if you know what I mean. Okay. But you like, he's you correct. Like, you like his dog toys. His, uh, it, the roses do have thorns, and they're bad, mm-hmm. and they suck, because anytime she's like, can you can you trim up the roses? I'm like, I don't feel like bleeding hey, today. It's wanna, like punching a cheese You, you want to sing a song about getting tore up? Let's sing about uh, blackberry bushes or something like that. We have those as well. Yeah. What, uh, what did you stop doing, and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. Actually, we had an old lady uh, saunter up the driveway. I had never seen this woman before. It was like two years ago. Rings her doorbell, opened the door. What's up, old lady? Um, do you mind if I pick your blackberries? I'm like, I don't give an F. I like, have at it, man. Do your thing. This woman came back like three baskets. Just pick yeah. the blackberries. And I'm like, look at this crazy old lady down there. But she was very nice. But now the kids I pick th- them and eat them. They're just too gritty for me. What, blackberries? Yeah, like I like them as a jam. I like them in a cobbler. All right. Just eating them. I don't know. I just don't like the texture of them when I eat them. Well, you know, I don't really eat tomatoes, but give me all the ketchup you got. Yeah. <laughs> what did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Doc. Welcome to the men's room. What's up, Buttercups? Oh, wow. Wow. Hey, um, I'll just keep it simple, man. I, I stopped doing a lot of things and a lot of them together, but the, the one that I called in about is I stopped cursing. Stop cursing. All right. Hold on. That's, that's yep. wonderful. We don't have to worry about dumping you. Yeah. They're right, on. right, yeah, absolutely not. Never have to. You know, and I've had people say no cursing on the radio. You know, this and that. So you got to worry about that, man. And it, it ain't happening. All right, now let me ask you this. All right, so I understand you can make the conscious effort to do it. And when I'm around my kids, believe it or not, I don't cuss. Their mom takes care of that for me, but I, I just don't cuss around. What are you kids. dropping? Like, fu- are you dropping but fudge bombs? What happens what? if you stub your toe? Because I feel like when you stub your toe, even if my kids screamed the next split when they stubbed their toe, I'm like, I get it, man. I get it. That's the time. I just, you know, the only thing I can do, man, I, I usually scream. Okay. You know, with something, something hurts, you know, but I mean, I, I try to make a conscious effort, you know, look, look I, I'm not going to lie to you. I probably have flubbed up a couple of times, but for the most part, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I just, I don't like the way it sounds. I had my ex wife <laughs> take me one day when I came home when I was in the military and every other word out of my mouth was the F bomb. And it sounded like dog do. Okay, so what are what are some of your substitute words? Was that was that the trigger for you to stop? No, I think the biggest thing was because uh, of my kids, and yep. you know, uh, I I also changed my lifestyle, and I you know gave my life to God, and all right. you know, okay. so you know, it's it, it's all good. I now mean, you, I'm still me. Now, do you yeah. have, do you what, have what substitute words, right? Because Mike, you do was it Dag Nabbit? Doggone it. Doggone it, Dag Nabbit. Like, Mike's got a, Mike sounds like you're somebody Sam when he's really angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like your Tasmanian devil, yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's a combination of a bunch of things, you know, and usually just making noises. All right, yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's the best thing I can do. What All branch, right, so you, so you, what branch so you of military were you in? I was in the Army, but don't tell nobody. Okay. Right. So you don't <laughs> I feel like you're a military and, guy. And, you I'm, got and, and, I, and I'm a truck driver now, and I used to have a mouth white one, but <laughs> I, I, had to get that, I had to get that stuff up, man. You do drop the alternative words, like cheese and rice or anything that, you, that, you know, sounds uh, well, like. But. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've probably said frickin' a few times, and, yeah. you know, I mean, but I just try to, you know, just refrain from all of it, man. It just, it to me, it just sounds... Bad. So you're what? a truck driver that doesn't curse. Now, and I'm not saying that truck drivers curse. What I'm saying is when you drive for a living, I mean, my guy, my mm-hmm. Uber driver, a 10-minute drive probably drops 45 bombs. Yes, yes. And my favorite word is idiot. Okay. Right. Well, you're All not right. wrong. You're right. not wrong. My grandfather was the same way. Very, very religious man. Yeah. I don't believe he ever said a cuss word in his life. But the word that he was trying to say would always start with the same letter. 
Oh, they want you to know. Yeah. The me- Miles, I ain't fudging around here. No, it, that's, you know what I mean? That's, that's a, I, I knew, like, you need it, it's to right shut your fudging mouth. It's like, right there in the code. Right. I need like, you to understand the severity of what I'm telling you, yeah. but I'm not going to say He would say, like, I'll fooey. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, darn tootin'. You know, he would, he would just, it was all close. You knew where he was going. Like, mm, he... He had many alternative words for the S word. Sure, sure. He, shoot. Yeah, shoot. <laughs> you know, but he would hold out the shoot. It's such shoot. a... Shoot. I mean, tone matters. I mean, look, my mother just didn't... She still just doesn't cuss. Yeah. But that was just... I don't know. That was just kind of her How thing. she grew up. Yeah. She just didn't curse. Like, I'm trying to remember, my grandmother didn't, but she also was a secretary at a school. Okay. So that so, probably yeah. helped. See, all the cussing that I heard from adults mostly was through the uh, friends of mine who had Catholic parents. That's kind of like how that that was where it was acceptable, even in their home. We didn't do it. Right. But, I mean, based on their language, there was a lot of things that you could not do. But language was not an issue. So really? As far as what came out of your mouth, that was not the problem. Your behavior was the problem. If well, you, behavior is number one. Behaved, but, but what the kids they can they say. They didn't put that into that category of that's not appropriate language. It, it was just off the table. I absolutely do. And look, I mean, I got a mouth on me, but the difference is I'm an adult, so I don't care. But with the kids, like, look, look I know you know the words. I know you know. It's not a problem with my daughter because she does not like cussing, cursing. She does not like the sound of it, et cetera, et cetera, like the guy that just called. My son, I don't think he minds the sound of it, but when I'm home, as my wife says, everything changes as far as what he's saying to his buddies playing video games sure. and stuff. And if I walk into his room and he's talking to his buddies, he will instantly announce, guys, my dad's in the room. Don't say anything stupid. I'm like, that is correct. Mm-hmm. Hey, I think Mr. It depends. Steve. And, and that's all because that is my rule with them. And they know that. So they're good It depends to where you are, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes I'll catch myself out in public or a sporting event. Like, you just, I just, you just don't realize there's that many kids around. Yeah. And that's fine, right? Like, I mean, look, I've done it in bars. Some bars will just have a railing between the bar section and the restaurant. And you're not thinking about it because right. you're at a bar. So, like, I don't, if somebody says, hey, we just got two kids, like, all right, cool. No problem. Right. So, I, I mean, have I, to apologize. I, <laughs> right. Right. It just I'm kinda, sorry as F, kids. Yeah, because I don't, I don't know that I judge people one way or the other. Like, obviously, they, there could be too much cursing where it's like, all right, we're just, right. Like, we get it. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just. You use good judgment. Yep. But just around the kids, I just try not to. What did you uh, stop doing? And why did you stop doing it? 206 803 Rock. You know, the irony of that is the two people that most of my life make me want to curse are the kids. Like, more than likely, mm-hmm. you're the ones that make me want to curse. I just don't do it around here. Actually, the first time they heard me cuss, uh, they were maybe five and six years old. Ted, you and I were talking about this the other day, but we had a rental car. We're driving from Philly to. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is it? Uh, Rehoboth? Not Rehoboth. Whatever. Yeah, we're, we're driving to the beach in, in Delaware. It's not a very long drive. It takes a while because traffic sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's the summer. It's like 95 degrees outside, 90% humidity. Well, it was a Jeep Patriot, I think it was. And it just, like, it just stopped. It's this all electrical system. It just stopped working. So we had to pull over on the side of this busy, busy, busy ass highway. Well, now the air conditioning doesn't work. I mean, it's just getting hot. So I get out of the car and I had to scream all these expletives to the sky, as it were. I get back in the car, and the kids are kind of looking at me, and they're like, Dad, are you all right? So I just looked at him and said, I stubbed my toe. Now, they knew I was lying, but they just, they let it go. And I felt bad, but I was that yep. pissed off. Yep. But I did not do it in the car. Hello, Daniel. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, and happy Taco Tuesday. Hola. So, I gave up weed because I became a truck driver. And it was ah. harder than giving up cigarettes. Really? Huh. All right. Interesting. Yes, because uh, it's out of the, the three things, like cigarettes, alcohol. Hello. And, and uh, as you can already tell, I'm a very energetic person, so sometimes it's a little hard to bring myself down. That thing was just the perfect nightcap for me. and uh, But I like making money, so I stopped doing it. So how long have you been uh, driving trucks now? I've been driving trucks since 2014. Okay, and when you uh, when you're no when you're no longer getting a uh, a urine test because of the job, are you going to go back and maybe smoke a joint? Oh heck yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> weed weed. I stopped for a while. That that was easy. Uh, cigarettes impossible. I mean, I I had the exact opposite uh, situation right. with myself as far as being able to stop one and not the other. For whatever reason, yeah. I could just walk away. From, I'll tell you what, though, man. I went about a month. I did a dry smoking month, 
And when I smoked, again, man, did I get high. I mean, I I got high like I was 16 years yeah, old. I mean, right? I got I got high, high from the weed. I was like, man, oh, man, this is this was what it was like when I first started getting high. That's kind of the giggly. nice thing about doing it. I was laughing. I was like, this is a way different feeling than when I was a daily user. It is when you're just chasing the dragon. Because I'll take like a week off from smoking it. But, but that's about all the time I need. And then when the weekend hits, you know, fire it up. And same thing. But I won't leave the house. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm like paranoid. I'm like, I'm just going to oh, sit here go and out. make food, man. <laughs> Everyone's going to know I'm high. <laughs> yeah, because you look high. What did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Matthew. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola. So I stopped cleaning the deli meat slicer with the power on and it running. <laughs> you used to clean it. <laughs> with the blade spinning. Oh, yeah. And you can imagine what happened. So that's what I was taught to do it. That's how I've seen other people do it. It always, you know, obviously it was dangerous, but it looks looks relatively safe. You just don't put your hand near the blade. Well, that is key. I was cleaning it one day with the blade on, and the rag I was using was probably a little old. The edge caught the blade, Ooh. ripped the rag out of my hand, and forced my middle finger right across the top of the blade. Oh! So did you lose the top of your middle finger? I did not. Uh, thankfully, I cut my middle finger like it was a piece of deli meat and mm. parallel to the bone instead of perpendicular. Okay. So it literally just sliced it right open and they stitched it back on. All right, let me ask you this. In your, in your cooking days, what is the worst injury you sustained, or was that it? That was definitely it. So, uh, yeah, I worked at a restaurant. It was at, at a winery. Uh, I did it every single job there. And uh, that was, I mean, little burns here and there. And, uh, you know, little nicks on your fingers, some knives. But sure. cutting with the deli slicer was the worst. Did you ever use a mandolin? Yes, yeah. Did you absolutely. put on the glove? Well, I, I actually got worker in compensation because I didn't have the glove back in the day. They didn't even look, man. To me, and all the things, if you work in the kitchen of a restaurant, I will never right? buy one. You understand that knives are sharp. We get that, but inevitably you're going to cut yourself. You understand the pots and pans are hot, but inevitably you're going to burn yourself. But that's just part of the job. But with the mandolin, right? Everyone said, "Dude, I don't need the glove," and I'm like, "Look, man. Everyone in this kitchen said the same thing once, and then." All of us cut ourselves on a man. I cannot explain how bad of an injury that is. And that's why everyone in this kitchen now wears gloves. I'm like, I don't need it. All right. Wait about 20 minutes. Here's the scream. Here's the blood. Got to go to the hospital. And it is a chainmail glove that you wear with these things. I was going to say, right. And yeah, I mean, like you hear the story constantly. Whether every it's time. restaurants, at home, somebody's always, it's like, did you use the glove? No, I didn't use the safety. I had, uh, I had right. a mandolin at home. And... My wife made whatever she made. I think she was cutting potatoes or something like that. She didn't cut herself. But I said, did you, did you wear the glove? She's like, no. And I got rid of it. I, I, I got, said, rid, of, I got man, rid of one of my own. We can't. If you're not going to wear the glove, and I, I'm not trying to be paranoid, but it's like, babe, I'm telling you, I cooked for 12 years. That Every mm -hmm. single person that uses this thing and doesn't wear the glove, they, they regret it. And they understand why everyone wears it. Like, do you put an oven mitt on your hand when you pull something on the yes. oven? Yes. Yes. Think of it the same way. It's that important. What did you stop doing? Why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. The one sometimes I forget is in a, uh, like, you know, just pan on top of your stovetop. Yeah. Like. You forget that the, is it all metal? Right. You forget that the lid. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. I don't, because you're right. I would never open the oven and just grab something. Right. But sometimes with that one, you're like, let's test it. See if I got one more before I got to use the oven mitt. It's like, why? Just use the oven You know it's going to be hot. Yeah. I did it over the weekend. I was cooking something. Didn't even give it another thought. Same kind of thing. And I go to pull the lid off to check what it is I'm cooking. And basically just threw the lid across the kitchen. Like, <laughs> God! And I feel like such an idiot. Even the kids are like, come on, dude. Right. <laughs> you taught us better than Right, that. like, you know better. You... Hello, Gary. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, my brother. Hola. Hola. So what did you give up, Gary? I gave up chewing tobacco. How many years did you one. do it? I chewed for over 30 years. Wow, man. How tough was it? Because tobacco in any form was a true pain in the ass to give up. Well, you know, honestly, I tried two times before. The third time was the charm, as they say. It takes that many times, but it was crazy. I, uh, Yeah, I started out trying to, to just go cold turkey. didn't work. Use a Zen stuff. That's like an alternative. 
and uh, it's like it had it was like having a can patch in your mouth. It really sucked. <laughs> How many times over the course of you uh, chewing or dipping did uh, someone accidentally drink your uh, spit? Oh, that happened once. My daughter did that. It okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. it's got to happen over the lifetime of you know. Same thing with yeah. uh, smoking cigarettes. I used to put them out in beer yeah. cans. I go back look for my beer can. Yeah. And it's a half empty one. I pick it up, put it in my mouth. The next thing I know, I got half of a wet cigarette butt. That's mine uh, in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, ugh, ugh, ugh. I've done that to myself, swallowed the cigarette butt. I didn't realize that I put my own cigarette in this can, right? Pick up the can, or I feel, oh, there's still a little bit of beer left. So I just kind of slug it down, and I feel the cigarette butt bounce off the back of my throat and go into my stomach. Just like, <sighs> damn it, and, man. And you're right. I dip for years. Like, eventually, somebody's going to pick up one of those spitters by mistake. Yep. What did you stop doing, and why did you stop doing it? 206 803 Rock. Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next? Look no further. The personal injury attorneys at Phillips Law Firm are here to help. Phillips Law Firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down. That's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible. Don't wait any longer. Call now, 1-800-JUSTICE, or visit justiceforyou.com. Therapy is known to be extremely helpful, but have you ever tried eavesdropping on someone else's problems? Listen to the new podcast, Say More with Dr. Sheila, starring Amy Poehler as the world-renowned self-proclaimed couples therapist. You know, it's funny, as I was making the appointment to come I'm, today. I'm sorry, I made the appointment. I made the I, I booked. I booked the appointment. Listen to Say More with Dr. Sheila on the free Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, it's Mike Hawk. Want more Men's Room content? Follow the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app and check out my live stream, A Moment with Mike Hawk and Nothing in Particular with Steve the Thrill Hill. Going live Thursdays and Fridays at 1, exclusively on the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Live day goes to the prom Friday night, December, uh, November 17th. Snoqualmie Casino. Doors open at 6. The uh, show ends around 11. We'll head on over to the casino, do a little drinking after that. But a, a different format this year for live day as we go to prom night. So the shows will be back to back with BJ and Megs in the men's room and uh, live music again. Everything live from the sound effects, the voice actors, a live barbershop quartet, all the commercials, everything you hear. Our boy Malcolm. 100% live. Oh boy, he's always a good time. Barbershop no quartet idea. will be there, man. We're going to have a uh, got married, man. Have a great night. She's in, this is an actual quote. Because she's in the same freaky S I am. <laughs> Why, well, I'm happy for you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> I am. I'm happy for that's, you too. That's exactly how yeah, it's man. I, I can't even tell you, man. You're gonna come down to San Diego. Some yeah, I'm not gonna fly up from the Sunshine out. State and uh, and join us as well as we head to prom night. Those tickets are on sale now. at KISW.com. You got to be 21 years of age or older to attend. But join us for a little live big dummy, the shout of the day, and all mm -hmm. the other fun stuff that is included in uh, in live day. As live day goes to prom night. And all the details at KISW.com. All right, uh, the indestructible Keith Richards. He has adapted a clean lifestyle in his latter years, which he calls a truly unique experience. <laughs> he says he gave up cigarettes in 2019. All right. So that was the last thing that he gave up. Cigarettes was the last one. So he was 75 when he quit smoking. That is correct. He gave up cocaine in 2006. If I recall the story, it's when he fell out of a tree trying to climb to get a coconut. Yes. And the doctor told him, based on the head injury he had and the other injuries, that for the time being... He had to stop doing cocaine. And it affected the pain medication he was on. Correct. And he complained about that openly, saying, well, because they say, you know, how are you recovering, Keith, and all that? He's like, oh, the recovery is going quite well, but frankly, I don't like the medication. So they assume, like, it made him feel bad or something like that. And he's mm -hmm. like, because now I can't do the bump of cocaine that I do before dinner. Every day. After dinner. Oh, was it after dinner? After, after dinner. dinner. Yeah, bump okay, my bad. Right. My right. bad, yeah. yes. He would, he would do one after dinner. Yeah, one. Not saying that he did... Uh, I think his one would probably be like four for most Just people. an occasional bump of, uh, of cocaine. Just after dinner. Gave that up 2006. Heroin, 1978. You might know uh, about his nuclear waste cocktail, which is a mix of vodka and orange soda. That sounds so ghetto. He's given that up, too. Yeah. I would not... But I bet you it's not soda bad. soda and yeah. vodka... I love no, no, we're not soda. saying it tastes bad. It just it seems just like sounds... such an aggressive name for orange soda and vodka. vodka right. Nuclear, Nuclear waste. waste. Yeah. I've, not, I've never had that before. I haven't either. I'll be honest with you. I read the article. I'm like, I might try that. That sounds pretty good. Uh, but don't get it twisted. 
He'll have alcohol occasionally because he's, quote, not going to heaven anytime soon. He says, I'm blessed that uh, physically this body just keeps on going. So far, I've had no real problems with getting old. There are some horrific things that you can see in the future, but you got to get there first. I'm getting along with the idea of being 80, still walking, still talking. I find aging a fascinating process. But then if you didn't, you might as well commit suicide. And the full interview is at uh, rollingstone.com. And Ted, do you think he's married or not? Keith Richards? Yeah. I'd imagine he has some kind of long-term girlfriend or wife. He's been married since 1983. Yeah. I could not believe that. I, just I mean, she obviously must. There were, They had some type of agreement or whatever. I'm sure they... Well, well when you think of the Rolling Stones, you first think of Mick Jagger, and you sure. don't think of, you know, uh, marriage. I mean, I know he's been married to Jerry Hall. I know he's been married a number of times. Right. But I, I just... He does not seem like the guy that, that, that settles down. So with that, the whole image in my mind of the band is a group of guys that have not settled down in that direction. And while oh, women, Charlie Watts passed, he had a wife. But like, you know, women will say like they find Mick Jagger sexy, but I've never... In my life, heard a woman say, but Keith Richards, he's sexy. People mm-hmm. like Keith Richards, but I've yeah. never, he's never been like the dreamy guy. Well, Mick Jagger's not sexy. No, I mean, he's, he's not. sexy on he's stage. He's the of the Rolling Stones. Right, correct. Yeah. That is, that's it. He and probably, look, it's not like, I, and I'm not one to make fun of people's looks, but I don't think anybody's going to argue that Lemmy was the most attractive dude. Nope. No. And, and he, he got landed a lot of women. Yeah. Did he really? Yes. He did. Yeah. Okay. He was one of those, I want to say, like, reached into the thousands kind of thing. He was one of those. He's pretty mm-hmm. famous, yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. I could, again, back to what you're saying. Look at the guy, and I just did not think that he would be. But again, you're the front man for Motorhead. I mean, that anywhere else, there's no way chicks are But you know the bar him. he goes to in Las Vegas, or he used to go to in Los Angeles. There's not a lot of attractive women in there. It's not that type of bar. I just right. did not see him, that being his scene. Oh, yeah. So I mean, speak. let me, he was notorious. Well, he was more into speed and, and Jack Daniels. Right, but what was what was his what's the bar he loves on the strip? Was it the Rainbow Room or something? Yeah, I believe yeah. Right. But I mean, it had its heyday. Yes, it did. He just was one of the few rock stars I think that was like, oh, I love this place. I'm still going to go in there every day and have Jack or whatever it is he was drinking. Jack, but trust me, he. I'm pretty sure he had plenty, like, of, I, plenty of stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Steve, like you said uh, yesterday, we were talking about uh, the uh, theoretical thing. If you had your own bar, you would have your own stool that would just be yes, for you. Yes. I'm pretty sure he had that. I think he did. So, like, if you went into that bar, you weren't allowed to sit there in case he came in. And he could come in at any minute. And, that, and that's so the whole thing. It, 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 it did not matter. Our question, what did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Teddy. Welcome to the men's room. Hey. Hola. 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 So 2018, that uh, winter that we had when we got all that snow, I ended up getting a little drunk with my boss, uh, coming home, going to the store and getting another half gallon of Jack Daniels. I drank that with pickle juice. Was pickle back, you know? All right. Went down to the water. I live in Bremerton, and I went and tried to swim across. There's a channel there. <laughs> and I, just, I tried to swim across it at 1130 at night in the snow. Jesus, man. I got halfway across when I woke up and I walked home and my neighbor ended up waking me up in the morning, sleeping out in the front yard in my underwear. Jesus. Still drunk, covered in snow. And that was when I realized I shouldn't drink alcohol. No that's more pickle juice. juice. You might be out of something there. Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> well, you, did you make it across the channel all the way? Well, so I made it about halfway through, and at at the halfway point that I made it to, it gets shallow on the far side, okay. and there's oyster shell beds on that side. So I think when I started trying to walk through the oyster shells and cutting my feet up is when my body was like, hey, you should wake up. It's cold. What are you doing? <laughs> how cold? I mean, yeah, that's, about, I mean that, you're so lucky you didn't die of hypothermia. Yeah. How, how cold is the water at this point? Um, geez, this was when, this was the year that we got three feet of, there was three feet of snow the next day. So by then I think there was like eight inches of snow on the ground and that was at sea level. So it was, that was when we were at like the, the 14 or 12 degree ambient temperature. So, I so, so how, Ted's right. How did you not die of hypothermia? I honestly could not tell you. Is it the Jack um, Daniels? Honestly, I think it was either that or I'm kind of a fluffier guy. I mean, my mom named me Teddy for a reason. I'm kind of a bear of a guy. Um, so I, I don't get cold. So when it's like cold outside, I'm actually the guy that stands in the group that's steaming and stuff. Are you the shirtless so. guy at the Bills game kind of guy? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. There you go. Are you from Montana? Is that why you're drinking the picklebacks? No. Nope. Actually, the funny thing is the pickleback was introduced to me in the 
Seaside, Oregon by a fellow that had just gotten out of jail. Okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm heading down to Seaside uh, this weekend. I mean, yeah, look, paperbacks are delicious. Yeah, they are. Well, see, I didn't know about that, and I had... I had had a bad day and I wanted to drink and I asked the older fellow, you know, what he was drinking and he told me it was Jack Daniels and pickle juice and I was like, oh, that's, that's well, weird. Well, and he started telling me about the old football days of how they'd drink Jack Daniels and pickle juice before the game and they could be drunk the first half hour and then be sober the rest of the game. Well, vinegar does a lot for you in a positive way from what I understand. I mean, a lot of people will drink uh, Bragg's, apple yep. cider vinegar or just maybe a vinegar pill. So it's, it's it's obviously not the worst thing for your body. I know it's probably not scientific. The Jack Daniels is not great, but yeah, yeah. but uh, that's that's one of those things on a health tip. If you're uh, holistic, they say you know, try a shot of it a night before you go to bed, see if it helps your stomach and all right. that. Well, and Mike and I were talking too. Like I like pickle juice, yeah. it's delicious, but you can't like drink pickle juice. Now, well, if you just worked you out, doing a shot of it or whatever is good. I mean, look, trust me, dude. I I've had four or five. Picklebacks in a night. You can. I'm just saying <laughs> the sodium and everything. I don't think you want to just be sitting around drinking pickle juice. My yeah. brother used to drink the pickle juice, right? My dad calls me upstairs, opens the fridge. Because, you know, parents are. I'm a parent now. I get it. Hey, if there's a teaspoon of milk left, just finish the freaking milk. If the orange juice yep. just fit right. So there's a pickle jar and all the brine's in there and there are no pickles. So he's giving me all this grief. And I'm like, Dad, I don't eat pickles. I don't like pickles. So he goes, what the hell is the jar going? I said, you need to talk to your old son. He drinks mm -hmm. it. My now, father you, said, what do you mean he drinks it? I said, he pours glasses of pickle. He didn't believe me. I said, trust me, just leave it in there. We sit down for dinner that night. Everyone has a drink. Sure enough, my brother drops three ice cubes in the glass, fills it with pickle juice. I thought my dad was going to vomit on him. <laughs> he was just like, you've got to be kidding me. What, um, now, when you, now you, you, you said you gave up drinking. Does that mean, can you have an occasional beer? Uh, you, you obviously oh. went on a bender when it came to Jack Daniels. Are you okay just sitting down and having a beer or two without getting into the oh, heavy yeah. stuff? Oh, yeah. No, I, I totally could. But see, I, I grew up and when I grew with the people I grew up with, if you were going to drink, you, you drank to get drunk. I never drank to sit around and have any fun. If I wanted to sit around and have fun, I'd, you know, smoke a joint or, okay. or hit, a, right. hit a bong or something. Fair like enough. Ah, okay. How about a non-alcoholic beer? Would you be, would you feel safe with that? Or is that leading down a bad road? Oh, no, no. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if I wanted to, I could go right down to the bar and have, you know, a shot of Jack Daniels and then walk away, you know, calm and cool. But no, the, the reason I really stopped was the, I found a lady right after that. And I, she kind of, you know, changed me for the better on that one. But, okay. You know. Well, good for you. Yeah, no. Hey, good uh, on it, you, was, it was more a, uh, a self-stopping thingy than anything. I mean, I'm that guy who can do anything, almost anything, and be able to quit. Video games, I'll never be able to stop those. Really? <laughs> do you want to? <laughs> Oh, no, no. Yeah, video games are your escape in reality. What is, uh, what's your video yeah. game of choice? Right now, that brand new one that just came out, Starfield. Starfield. Either that or World of Tanks. World of Tanks. World of Tanks. Don't know I've I never know heard that. of that one. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. My kid just got some new game. I, I don't remember, man. He's, he's still in the Fortnite. There's a few other Gorilla Tag. You seeing this? This is the thing on the ooh, Oculus. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know. Watching people use an Oculus is one of the greatest things that you can ever watch. Because you look like a crazy person on 3rd Avenue, mm -hmm. you know, like when you're tweaking. But they're not. They're actually playing a game. But this game, Gorilla Tag, and it's the name says what it is. You are a gorilla, and you're out there with other people that are gorillas, and you're trying to play tag, all right? But you have, to, right. You have to move like a gorilla. So right now, he's doing the Oculus in the kitchen, right? Because he has a little more space to move around, and it just cracks me up. So you put on his headset... And he, I just, I can't explain it. Dude just moves his arms like a gorilla. He's yelling things. You see him looking around. I'm like, dude, you look so crazy to me right now. I have never seen anybody downtown on fentanyl that when they have that fentanyl lean, you look like he's going to take a header. Yeah. It and must be fall. the most amazing thing for balance. That drug must keep you <laughs> from falling. I, 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 I have, an I have, I have drug. worried about people when they're just, I know they're going to make it, but they're all bent over. And I mean, they are seriously, they're, they're, their head's almost at their toes. Yeah. But they yeah, won't. They don't fall. fall. Yeah, it's the damnedest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I, man, I'm hammered. I'm, I'm, I'm. I can barely walk in a straight line. Right. They're messed up, and somehow they're balanced, impeccable. And but they're asleep. impeccable. And yeah, it's exactly. crazy. <laughs> it is. It's like, man, you should like do like trapeze act, like right. walk a high wire, or something, man. But only on fentanyl. If you do it sober, right. you're going to fall. I mean, yeah, it's, right. it's insane. Cirque du Soleil. Everyone's on fentanyl. Fantastic There's got to be an explanation for this. I don't know what it is, but I've never seen a drug that can keep you that well balanced. Even though you're unconscious. Even though you're asleep. I mean, opiates are pretty fake. Cause heroin was the same way. Yeah. It yeah, was kind of yeah. famous for like that heroin lean and people just kind of get stuck there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just, I mean, man, everyone, he's driving into town someday and like, man, he's going to fall into the street. 
Not a chance. It looks like they dropped a contact not, not a chance. and they're looking for it. Yeah. You realize, no, they're asleep. What did you stop doing? Why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Chris. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Oh, oh thank you for the on. show, ma'am. So, real fast, I'm 30 years old right now. Joined the military at 18. Picked up some bad habits. Started drinking a bunch, doing cocaine, and dropping acid because might as well do the things they can't test for. <laughs> So, about two years ago, I finally decided to drop acid. I used to enjoy my brain fry usually once a month or so, but took a tab. It's probably about 9 o'clock at night when this starts hitting me. Kids are already in bed. Wife's in bed. It's starting to hit me. I'm sitting there playing some video games. All of a sudden, my wife comes out. She's sitting on the toilet with food poisoning. Like, oh, oh God. no! I just, I just got to sit here, do my thing, kind of ignore it. <laughs> About two seconds later, the dog walks over and pukes on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so he ate whatever she ate. I, I guess. So she asked me to try and clean this up. I try and clean it up. I'm getting that cleaned up. My youngest kid walked out. Just, just pissed the bed on himself. Jesus, dude. So. I'm here, eyes wide open, half tripping, wife sitting on the toilet, crapping her mind out, and I'm trying to scrub the kid in the tub. <laughs> after cleaning up uh, after the dog. While your wife is actively and, pooping. Oh, yeah, yeah. What Small house, one bathroom, didn't have anywhere to go except for the tub to clean up the kid. And then we also have a cat. The cat's old. Cat's about 20 years old. Jeez. She decides she's going to not poop in the litter box tonight either. <laughs> and it's, I wasn't quite on that verge where I was really tripping, but I, I'm feeling it. And then everything just goes wrong that night. And I'm like, there's there's no way I can have another night where I'm not in a right mind if something goes wrong. Right. Yep. Yeah. Especially I mean, look, with, that's, with kids, bro. That's, a I mean, that's, that's that, already that's a kind lot. of, I don't want to say, uh, Seems a little reckless. You just got to be sitting at home with everybody there doing it. But like you I get what yeah, you're doing. Yeah. You rolled the dice. Everyone's in bed. You're thinking, yeah. all right, everyone's asleep. Let me do my thing. And then all hell breaks loose and everything goes wrong. By the way, how bad did it stink in the bathroom while your wife's in there dropping food poisoning? I thought I had it the worst. If I used the bathroom, I mean, <laughs> I'm right there with you. Like, I can stink out a room, but whatever my wife ate that night, I couldn't get it out of my nose for two weeks. Well, not I'm only surprised that, you didn't pee. You know the, I know, man. You know what the worst thing, too, is when you do that, in my mind, because you're half out of it, whether you wake up or somebody peed the bed or whatever the deal is. Yeah. Putting the top sheet on. Yeah. Just, just changing the sheets. I mean, that to me. It's a pain in the ass. God, it's like, it's a puzzle. I can never I can never put the fitted sheet on the right way first. It's always the wrong direction, and then I'm fighting it, and then the corner won't go over. I'm a, that, that that was the one thing I hate about my kids getting sick in the middle of the night, was having to change, change the Especially bed. on the top bunk bed of my kid. My, yep. my one yeah, kid would right, always do it on the top, so I'm like hanging off of a ladder that's not meant for it's my not meant way. for you, right. I'm picking the damn... <laughs> mattress up to get everything under it. God, I hated that. Now, that I don't was, know if that they, was the worst part of the cleanup process. I don't know if they do this on all sheets, but I only discovered this maybe three weeks ago, right? So we got a king-size bed, and it's the same kind of thing where I'm kind of cussing under my breath because I hate putting the top sheet on, but, you know, they're freshly washed, blah, blah, blah. So as I grab the sheet, I realize it's inside out, and then it says, foot. And I'm like, no. So I go around to the other side, it says, head. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. It's been there the whole time. And I don't know if they do it on all sheets, but I would say, check. because trust me, up until about two weeks ago, every time we had to change the sheets, it was a pain in the ass. No matter mm -hmm. what direction we laid it on, it was the wrong way first. Right? That's a guarantee. And I finally saw that. And I'm like, I will be damned. I don't know that I've noticed that on sheets I've owned. I, I thought I it was supposed to be the, the tag there. of the fitted sheet goes to the right-hand corner. Okay, see, I think you're right. I've thought that myself. So that's, and somehow it's yeah. still, I, I just, I lose my mind on that. It's such a stupid thing to be pissed off about. What did you stop doing, and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Danielle. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch, hola. Hola. So, my thing is, I um, I had my kids when I was really young. So, about 20, 22 years, I stopped drinking. 
You mean my when- husband didn't stop drinking, but I did just because I was like, you know, breastfeeding and sure. trying to be there for all the kids, whatever. Well, then I, um, my kids got older and my husband's like, hey, you're such a fuddy duddy. Like, you don't want to go out. You don't want to do anything. Let's go out and do something. And so I'm like, okay, fine. So my kids are old enough now. I can leave them at home. And I did. And now my husband and I are constantly going out to the bars. We're drinking, everything else. Well, I realized that I don't like the bars. You don't like bars? No, because it seems like every time I go to the bar, like everybody wants to like force me to drink more. Oh, right? yeah. You're going to the wrong bar then. <laughs> apparently, apparently. But like I every time I go to the bar, I'm like I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop drinking. I'm gonna get to this point, blah blah blah. It'll be fine. But then the next yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Once again, bedroom colors, here are the seven words you can't say on the radio. Sucker, mother, and please keep those words in mind when calling. Now back to the program. Yeah. F and hungover, Miles. That's right. Drink yeah. them F and hungover. Hey, there, the bars are a little different. What do you mean? Like I'm just like I love bars, but I'm not a. I like bars. Yeah. I'm not a huge bar like like during the week and stuff. But I feel like if I make a point to go meet somebody at a bar, like I'm gonna have more than like two or three beers as opposed to like sitting on the couch yeah, watching a random too. game it depends on with right so the wife and i will go to the bar often after work but it's like we go in for one but as we do let's have our quick adult talk before we go home and the kids can hear what we're talking mm-hmm. just stuff they don't need to know or they don't want you know what i mean so we'll go there get a beer get a shot go home if i'm gonna go to the bar with your miles after work, we're having five or six beers, probably five or six shots, right? So with the wife, I'm under more control. Plus, she watches me like a hawk because she always says, look, just do one shot. I go, okay. Now, we both know I'm lying. And the game at this point is for her to find out when I'm going to do my second shot. Sometimes I set it up before I go out and smoke a cigarette. Hey, man, this happened on the corner of the bar. So now my back's towards, I'm walking toward the door, and you know the place I'm at. So my back would be to her as I'm walking out. I do the sip, and I turn around. She has her arms folded, staring me down. I'm like, I got him, too. My favorite That's move all was, I need. My favorite move was, don't make dinner tonight. I'll stop when I get off the bus. I will get off two <laughs> stops before my regular stop. <laughs> End up, like, hitting the P.I., get a couple shots in me, get a couple beers, just waiting for the food to get ready. By the time I walked up the hill, man, I'm like, I'm good and cooked. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to have a good night tonight. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I don't think anybody falls for that, though. No, I mean, she knew every time. I mean, I'm not going to just sit there and wait for my food. Don't give me a Diet Coke. You know, the thing is, we always, no matter what you ask, how many shots did you do? I'm always going to say two. Right? Always. Every single time. So, there's a time we're flying back. I don't remember where we're flying back from, but Miles and his wife end up bumping into me and my wife at the at our layover airport. We did not go to the same place, but that's where our layover was. So, Miles and I sit together, and the two wives sit together, all right? So, legitimately, all right, legitimately, we had two shots on the flight, because it wasn't a very long flight. No. We had two shots. My wife walks up. How many shots did you guys do? I said, we did two. You think I'm effing stupid? I'm like, baby, I swear to God, the boy that cried wolf. Like, no, like, seriously, this time. I know I lie to you all the time about this. This time, I'm telling you the truth. We honestly only, she never believed me. I'm like, I lie to you every time. But this time, I'm not lying to you. Right, but I mean, why would she? (laughs) No reason to. When did you stop doing it? Why did you stop doing it? 206 803 Rock. 99.9 KISW. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Well, with Terry Daly, coming up, we're going to sit and spend today with 10 falls. Songs to start that fall season. Sit and spit on the way right after emails on our question What did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206 803 Rock. Hello, Aaron. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Long time listener, a few time caller. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Miles and Phil, you guys have been awesome. You've really helped me out through a tough time in my life. Oh, right on, man. I'm glad we could do it. Yeah. Didn't mean to, but, you know, I'm glad we could. I feel like yeah. we're going to hear about this tough time, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which one of us slept with your wife? <laughs> well, she's an ex-wife now. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I know. Oh, cool. Yeah. We were trying to help you out in life. Yeah. You know, make things easier for you. 
Yeah, well, that's the reason why I'm calling, and that's one of the reasons why I stopped doing what I was doing. Um, so I ran a, I learned how to make moonshine, <laughs> and I built myself a still, full-blown reflux still in my garage. And I was pumping out, oh, five to 15 gallons of straight-up moonshine a day. A wow. day? Damn. A day. And it it's so cheap to make. I would just go down to your local restaurant supply store and get a 20-pound bag of sugar for 10 bucks and go to one of those, you know, uh, brewery dispenser houses that you can get, like, supplies to make beer and wine. And you get, like, a big pack of yeast for, like, three bucks. And... I had at one time, I had a 55 gallon barrel full. And this is like one of those big wine barrels. Yeah. Full of straight up 140 proof liquor. Were you burning the barrels out on the inside to try to make some type of whiskey or anything with it? Yeah, yeah. So I, I well, it's called decoopering. And so I, I went, I was out in Yakima at one of the, one of the wineries out there. And I bought a couple barrels and I learned how to look it up online. And you take the rings off the barrel, and then you you grind off the, each of the, the barrel rungs out, and then you burn them basically with a blowtorch, and you put it back together, and then you fill it up with water, and it, it leaks for a couple of days until all the wood swells back up. Right, right. And then <clears throat> I even built like a little cart for it, so I could push it around the garage, so I could move my cars. <laughs> <laughs> and I filled this thing full, completely full. I mean, uh, and we're talking, you know, 55 gallons in which when you cut alcohol in half, you end up with basically, you know, an E85, which you can run a car out. And so <laughs> during, <laughs> during COVID, I thought the world was going to end. And so I, feel, I was like, I'm going to, you know, I've got a Yukon that runs off of uh, E85. So I was like, I'm just going to fill this thing up so if the world stops making gasoline i'm just gonna make my own fuel you uh, know <laughs> all right drinkable fuel yeah drinkable fuel a crazy thought at that time mm -hmm. well yeah 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 but then uh but you know you get a little bit here on the side a little bit there on the side next thing you know you're sideways because it's basically free liquor you know i mean i i and then i started selling it to this biker gang that they would come by once a week, and I'd sell them like thirty, forty gallons of, of straight up moonshine. How much are you? How much and are you charging per gallon? I was charging twenty bucks a gallon. And okay, I that, that was seems fair. That's a good. That's a that's a fair deal because I mean, I I was making it for a quarter of the price, and they were friends of mine. That you know, they, I'm not going to say which, but there was a you know, uh, it starts with an H. You know, there's the bikers, um, you know, dealership. Uh, there's a couple of them, but they, I, you know, and I, they come by and they're super nice. They would, they come by and then they, they just liked my product, you know, and I knew it was totally illegal and, you know, but so I come home one day and I walk in the door and the place just reeks of, of moonshine. And I walk in to see my ex-wife. And she's just dumping all of it down the drain. All of it. She, she dumped every piece of liquor that I had out of my moonshine still down the drain into the drain field. And you know what that does? You mix, you mix alcohol with septic system. Mm. You got a bomb going off in your backyard. <laughs> did, it, did, it, did it blow? It didn't blow, but I had to call the septic company and tell them what happened because <laughs> if there would have been, if there would have been one spark, the entire septic system in my backfield would have exploded with, you know, S. I can't say it out loud. Well, you know? did she, yeah, was she upset? Word. Was she upset about your drinking habits or was she upset about the fact that you were producing this stuff? Both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. It was both. You know, I mean, we had three younger kids and. You know, I've worked in the restaurant industry my whole life, and you know, 
we ended up getting a divorce and everything's so much better now. Um, <laughs> but I definitely stopped, stopped doing that. Um, I might go back into it for like, uh, like a job, maybe, because I, I know say, how to do it. If you did it, you know, above the... If you have the right. skill to do it, and obviously, like you said, these bikers, they like your product enough, they kept coming by to buy it, it'd be worth pursuing. It's like when they legalized weed in Washington State, right? And they had to reach out and they said, look, we we obviously have no idea what we're doing. All of a sudden, all these dudes that I knew that have, quote, unquote, been doing the illegal stuff forever, when well, now they're wearing suits. I had a buddy mm-hmm. named Brandon. This guy, he always grows on weed. Entirely illegal, grew great stuff, but he really cared. He was basically a horticulturist, right? He really understood how weed works, so he took it very seriously. And he knew it was illegal. And then all of a sudden, Washington State's hiring, and he got basically an executive. This is the dude, every time I saw him, was on a long board and a pair of shorts. Kind of guy that has a soul patch, but it looks right on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Next time I see him, he's got a three-piece suit. You know, same soul patch, same stone, but he knows what he's doing. So I would think the same thing could apply to you. Like, look, you might as well... Put it to the test. Right. You know, I mean, you can always work for a local distiller. Somebody that makes their own hooch. I mean, Rainier makes their own gin. Heritage, Fremont yeah, Distillery. Heritage. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's a, a few of them in town. There's, there's a ton yeah. in the area. I mean, a lot of times. they're doing all kinds of different stuff. Too. If you they can do your illegal activity and put it, I have a cousin who years ago, growing up as a teenager, computers had first kind of hit, like we still dial up modem and all this. And he's like, man, I'm going to work at the Pentagon. I'm like, well, that's a lofty ambition. Good luck for you. Uh, he told me his plan, which was to hack into them. And not take them, just hack into them and let them know I can do this. So I said, I, I think that's a very bad idea. A couple of years go by, but that's exactly what he did. He now works for the Pentagon. He's over in Europe. And he works for their IT security. Because he's like, I can break through any firewall you got, man. And I'm like, maybe apply for the job. He's like, I want to get hired. There's no real interview process in that particular case. So he hacked in, basically let them know exactly who he is. They came to, quote unquote, visit him. They had a talk, but yeah, he was working there like three months later. Damn. What did you stop doing? Why did you stop doing it? Uh, 206 803 Rock. I, I know a lot of people. I don't recommend you do that, but it worked out for him. Because I know a lot of people that don't make, like, uh, what, like apple pie or whatever, but they still yeah. go to, like, legal stores and buy, buy the vodka the, or the grain alcohol or whatever. Exactly. I don't know if I know anybody that actually makes their own. Once in a while, somebody will have a little jar or something and be like, I know somebody that made this. And you're like, cool. Yeah, I think, but I'm impressed by that guy. But yeah, that's that's a big operation, man. Yeah. That's why I could never take the time to learn to do something like that. It, it would instantly be a problem. And my wife would do the same thing. Like, I'm dumping all of your product out, not because you're making it, but because you're drinking. Well, Miles asked the correct question. Was it the drinking or the making? And it he did. said both. It's yeah. like, right, you're married. There's three kids at home. I'm like, and one, one day she woke up and said, to hell with it, I'm done with it. Now. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there was many conversations about it <laughs> leading up to that point. Hello, Lisa. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. I'm so happy to chat with you guys. Thank you so much for your yeah, funnies all day, every day. I just enjoy you so much. Oh, thank my, you. Um, my, uh, I quit drinking about 24 years ago. My, I didn't meet my husband until after that, and he ended up being a major drinker when I met him. I've been sober about two years. He ended up, um, I knew it wasn't going to work whatsoever because I knew that I could not be around someone that drank. And so, thank goodness, the only, the only problem was is that I really liked him, and, and I thought, I really like this guy. I have got to just, maybe I'll wait till next week to tell him. You know, that I'm not going to, this isn't going to work. And so I kept putting it off week after week. And it turned out that when I brought it up to him at one point, I just never wanted to tell him not to drink, but he was a big time drinker. And what was so cool about it is when it came down to it, um, when the conversation did come up, he never drank again. We've been married 20 years this month, and I am the biggest partier to this day. With, even though I'm not a drinker, I know how to party. And so I just have had um, a blast with him. In fact, oh, no. No. Oh, come on. Um, dance no. or anything like that. We'll go to the casino and then we'll turn out. He'll go in for dinner. I'll go next door and party and dance, whether it's by myself, whatever, and dance all night. And he'll go in for dinner and I'll be next door dancing. So, so- we just, I'm the one that looks drunk at the party. When you <laughs> when you first broached this topic with it, because like you said, it's not a conversation you really wanted to have. You knew it was necessary. Did you believe him when he said, I'll just stop? 
I didn't really think about believing him. I just knew that I could not tell him not to drink sure. because that wasn't going to be. So really the conversation was more about the fact he said, when I'm with you, I don't want to drink. And I thought, oh, girl, this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to say it now. Got to say it. And so I said, yeah, but when you're not with me, you do. And he said, that's it. He goes, I'm like, no, 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 no. He goes, that's it. I'm done. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't, you don't have to. I just, for me, it's just difficult because for, it was pretty early in sobriety. But yeah. that was it. He never drank again. And his mother is a non-drinker. So you can imagine who loves me. His mom <laughs> loves me. Do you ever, uh, do you ever partake in uh, smoking any weed or anything like that? Or are you strictly completely no. sober? No, I am completely sober, but I really just have such a positive outlook on things and just love to party that I think that at this point it would probably make me a par little paranoid right, yeah. if I were to, yeah. you know, at that this point. But I'm, you know, um, at that stage where I just don't think about it, but we do have a great life. We live on a lake. We have a party house. So I have more alcohol at my house <laughs> than most people that don't drink. And I'm the Cosmo maker. And I mean, I just love the, I love to party. I just always have. And it's nice that I've been able to adjust to this because now I don't even think about it. Yeah, but I have to say I have an awesome husband. Awesome husband. That'll tell you when someone loves you, when they stop something that he was drinking about 18 beers a day. What about when you go to a bar? You cool in there too? Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. No, I'm the one that wants people to get wasted so that I can party with them. Okay. All right. All right. So, okay. I'm glad that it didn't ruin your lifestyle because I think, you know, like no. one of the, try to stay away from friends and situations that right, put you in a bad place to everyone on your addiction. Yeah. And so a bar yeah. would be number one for me. I'd be like, I could not go into a bar. If I, right. if I quit drinking, I absolutely could not go into a bar. Not for but, a long time. I mean, I don't, I, I just, I know me. Like I could not go to the bar, period. Yeah, it's impossible. And even if it's like, dude, we're just here to watch the game. You can just eat, get something to drink that's not booze. Like, I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm actively trying to quit drinking, yeah, there's no chance. I mean, like my cousin, he stopped drinking years ago, but they run a beer garden. He's the main bartender. Really? Yeah, Does he drink some NAs and stuff like that? Does he What's ever, that? Does he have a non-alcoholic beer every once in a while? You know, that's a good question. I should ask. I, I like the taste. I don't of think beer. he. You know, no, no, no. I'm with. They're, they're not bad. I and I know. I know a ton of people I, who quit alcohol. Yeah, who will still uh, <laughs> let me phrase yeah, let me phrase that quit alcohol. Who will still drink an NA beer? But I don't know that my cousin Patrick does. But he's like he'll even tell you. I mean, like he was a good partier and, and a good drinker. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he liked he liked getting after it. So he's like, yeah, it's kind of fun. He's like, I can run this bar. He's like, I, he's like, I don't have to taste it. I know what it should taste yes. like, what the combinations of <laughs> right, He's like, right. I spent way too much time in bars. Okay. Right. What did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? 206-803-RUN. That's the weird thing, too, with like, not weird, but that's the difference between like food and other stuff. I've met plenty of bartender or waitress or waiter who says, I don't drink anymore, but it, like, I still like this job. There's still good money in it. Yeah, for sure. But like, I don't think... You, food you have to have so you're never going to meet a chef that's like well I don't eat any of my food I don't eat anymore <laughs> I just I stopped eating I just make french fries Quit look, three years ago. Right. I look at them and smell them <laughs> oh god I want one just one right that's I mean like honestly sometimes that's what can be tougher about it too especially for somebody like me right I can fluctuate I certainly yeah. like eating food like with booze if you're not supposed to it's like alright I gotta stay away from it with food it's like, you don't have to well you still gotta eat you just yes. gotta make sure we're making the right choices right you're eating carrots earlier mm -hmm. <laughs> Made a right choice, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sound so happy about it. I heck yeah. Hello, Michael. <laughs> Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hi. Hi. How you doing? We're doing great, Mike. Thanks, man. Good, good. Uh, I gave up drinking. How long ago? Uh, about 10 years ago. All right. And what led you to that point? My kids were getting older. And you just didn't want them to see you drinking? Well, um, they were still getting older after I stopped, so <laughs> uh, so I started again. Wait, what now? Well, they're never going to stop getting older. Yeah, they were they were getting older when I was drinking. So I stopped drinking, but then... Uh, they stopped getting yeah. older, so you went back. No, they were still getting older. I'll be damned. So do you drink now, or do you not drink now? Yeah. 
I do. Okay. So you quit for a little while. Yep. Okay. And now you're back on it. Baby steps. That's a very confusing phone call. I, I'm with you. I, I was like, I got very lost. So, but in the end, so he's drinking now, but he had stopped for a certain amount of time because his kids were getting older. But now right. that his kids have stopped getting older, <laughs> he's I, I, I was like, I couldn't tell if he was like setting us up for a joke or like, well, they kept getting older, so I started again. Well, I mean, that, that's what happens in life. Yeah. You just continually get older. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep getting older every day. Yeah. Sorry. Then I'm gonna stop drinking. <laughs> Taryn Taylor's coming up. Uh, Taryn's coming on the way. We're going to sit and spend 10 fall songs to start the season. And we have your emails on the way from the men's room at KISW.com next. Tick tock, tick tock. Before you know it, the end of the year will be here. So remember to use your vision benefits before they expire. Schedule eye exams today for the whole family by visiting ProVision.com. ProVision will cover the cost of your insurance copay or eye exam, plus they accept all major vision plans, including eye med. Valid prescription required. Valid at participating locations. Restrictions apply. Taxes extra. See store for details. Ends 123 Exams available at the Independent Doctors of Optometry at or next to ProVision. Some doctors employed by ProVision. Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next? Look no further. The personal injury attorneys at Phillips Law Firm are here to help. Phillips Law Firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down. That's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible. Don't wait any longer. Call now, 1-800-JUSTICE, or visit justiceforyou.com. Therapy is known to be extremely helpful, but have you ever tried eavesdropping on someone else's problems? Listen to the new podcast, Say More with Dr. Sheila, starring Amy Poehler as the world-renowned self-proclaimed couples therapist. My mother will come over when she says she will. Knowing that she's always going to be there is really nice for me because I don't have to make my own cereal. Listen to Say More with Dr. Sheila on the free Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9. Yes, Ten fall songs to start the fall season. Coming up with Taryn Daly as we will sit and spin. First time, though, for a few emails from the men's room at KISW.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. Had a couple from our question, what did you stop doing and why did you stop doing it? Uh, Ola, gentlemen, I completely gave up smoking a few years ago in favor of vaping. And at the end of this past June, I gave up the nicotine vape. There's still cravings here and again, but at this point, I'm generally feeling a lot better. And the only vape I use is a single hit of my weed vape before going to bed. Liquor and horse, guys. That from Dennis. Guys, in 2014, I had uh, surgery on my right ankle. The physician's attendant took the stitches out. She missed a few, and the incision got infected. Doc says, you got to quit smoking or it's just never going to heal. He prescribed Chantix. Two weeks after uh, taking it, I couldn't stand the taste or smell of cigarettes. Haven't had a smoke since February 2014, and I was a two- to three-pack-a-day smoker. That from the Elk Plain Drifter. Actually got a prescription for uh, Chantex myself. Oh, did you? Haven't tried it yet because I went to the Walgreens today, and the line was all the way down the aisle and around the corner. Ah, so I'm like, I'll just come back at another time. I'll quit then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I read his story, I was like, I didn't realize it could work that well. Hey, Ray Leo well, tried to tell us. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. I, look, it, tobacco, nicotine specifically, it's just so hard for people to yeah, quit. Nicotine. So I'm like, man, you got to take a pill. Whatever. Whatever, man. Yeah. On to the birthday request, guys. Can you please wish Logan a happy 15th birthday with a fish sandwich? Thanks so much. Love you guys. That from Nat. A filet of fish sandwich. Greetings, gentlemen. Would you please wish my amazing boyfriend, James, pronounced Butthead, a happy 32nd birthday. Listen to your show every day on the ride home from work, and I think it'll make his day so much better. So, going to get a fart medley and Coach Ted, hyping him up for another trip around the sun. You guys are so awesome. That from the lovely Brittany. Oh, All right, James, AK. J. 
James, a.k.a. Butthead. Well, Coach, fire up for another year around the globe. Listen, we're just as shocked you made it as you are. But it's going to be a good year. Also, not going to lie to you. You got a weird week, weekday birthday? Maybe save that day off for like a week from today. There might be something fun to do on the Monday night before that. I don't know. It's your birthday. Do what you want with it. That's Coach's advice. Gentlemen, I want to wish myself a very happy 37th birthday as I'll be traveling to London for four days to celebrate. Nice. nice. You guys have been to London. Can you recommend any pubs, restaurants that I should check out? I told him straight up. I said, look, bro, I, I cannot tell you any place by name, but I've been there once. Bar hop. Seriously, just walk around the city and enjoy it. It is And a try great different city. neighborhoods. Don't just... Like, Agreed. I, right, you could sit there in the middle of London and see the eye and all that stuff. Yeah, but like, yeah. Right, there's a lot of neighborhoods. It's a big city. Go explore. And, and Thrill's right. Trust me, a couple of the pubs you go to, they won't be happy to see you. But it's fun. <laughs> it's authentic. <laughs> Guys, can I also get the dirty Germans telling my wife what she can do with my Big Ben in Parliament when I come back home? I love the show, guys. That from Justin. Yeah, oh, your Big Ben in Parliament. I see uh, what you did there. Tell her to stare at your clock. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't see it going on that one. I thought, you know, most of you don't know this, but a fun fact about England is that Big Ben can fit inside of Parliament. Yeah. You should tell her, you know, you should put two hands on this clock. What birthday was that, did they say? How old? 37. All right. Miles, I know you're with me. I can't hear Big Ben in Parliament and not think about the Griswolds being mm. stuck in that traffic. Look, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I want to request a 37th birthday shout out to my wife, Leanne. Please give her the green beans and the dirty Germans talking about what she and her engineering co workers spend all day measuring at the Everett Boeing plant. Thanks, guys. That from Alex. Green beans, green beans, green beans, green beans. Yeah, I imagine that your wife, Leanne, there is measuring Boeing penises. <laughs> yeah, so you know, at the end of the day, you know, so measuring something much bigger than yours. But yeah. same, <laughs> same look. Yeah, <laughs> does she call yours the, what is, the dream rider? What the hell it is? The dream liner. Yeah, it's the dream liner. Dream rider. Yeah. yeah. Mine comes with two engines. I have the dream Vena. I just want to wish my lovely wife, Velika, happy birthday. I can't what? be there today. Velika? V E L I K A. How would you say that? I wouldn't. Velika? Velika? Uh, give her a collection of your favorite sound bites and the dirty Germans telling her what she can expect on Saturday when I do come home. That from Craig. Oh, my God. Dip responsibly. <laughs> yeah, I think what you can expect on Saturday when Craig comes home is disappointment. <laughs> yeah, and we all know that Craig's coming home on Saturday. He probably lost that job on that Friday. Yeah, I'll see you Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before Craig gets home. Yeah, so it almost sounds threatening. Yeah. Well, Craig's coming home. You say Saturday, okay. Friday night it is. Hello, gentlemen, and Miles. My wonderful wife Donna turns 54 today. She's getting total knee replacement on Thursday. So how about Coach Ted hyping her up and the dirty Germans telling her all the things she can do with her brand new knees? Thanks, guys, and appreciate it. Zaz, you want the Germans to go first? Whoever. Oh, so, uh, yeah. What was that new replaced knee? You could spend more time on them. Yeah, you know that this is the entire goal. Let them get reacquainted at the top of your head. There's Donna Wanna. All right, honestly, this knee replacement stuff is great. I was talking about the other day. I got an uncle. He got one done. Loves it. You just got to do the rehab, all right? Coach doesn't just give out fun advice. It's also tough advice. Yeah. Do the rehab. A few months from now, you'll be bouncing around like a spring chicken, like a little rabbit. Any of that kind work. of stuff. All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaza Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, uh, Schweineflash. Thank you, Bob. A couple extra emails here before we get to Tara. And uh, this message says thank you. Gentlemen, been a fan of yours for longer than I can remember. Since the days of Ben the Psycho Muppet through the era of syndication all the way to the moment I'm typing this out. Uh, you guys have been an amazing source of entertainment. Got me through some rough patches with your humor and downright uh, legendary status on the Seattle Airways. Okay. Okay, whatever. Just moved to the Los Angeles area as of yesterday to pursue my dreams of becoming a Hollywood actor. Wanted to pass along my thanks for always keeping me laughing while I can still listen to your show via the lovely and free... Odyssey app. 
It's just uh, not the same as uh, tuning in with my radio. But you guys are amazing. Thank you for being you. Sincerely, that from Jay. Jay, good luck down there. Yeah, good luck, brother. Good luck, thanks for the uh, thanks for the nice uh, the nice words. And one more. Where's a random one here? It says porta potty. I'll read this. <laughs> Gentlemen, catching up on the podcast, was listening to Miles tell the story of the time he dropped his glasses into the outhouse toilet. Well, it was last year at a large three-day music festival in the hot August heat, the final day of the festival, and the porta potties they were in pretty rough shape. After waiting in line for ten minutes, I entered the porta potty, closed the door, turned to face the toilet, and my brand new fancy foldable cell phone fell out of my hands and right into the deep blue liquid. I plunged my arm elbow deep into that thick, mm. hot, chunky stew and felt around until I found it after accidentally grabbing other things <laughs> on the bottom of the tank. I ran out of the porta potty and over to one of those little pump sink things, <laughs> covered it in soap and scrubbed the hell out for a long, long time. Scrubbed my arms, scrubbed my hands. I never told any of my friends due to the <laughs> disgust and embarrassment. Thank God for water resistant phones. Thanks, guys. That from Blake. Yes, friends, it's time once again for Sit and Spin. Let's gather around the old radio and listen to some swellerific new music. Tara Daly, how are you? Greetings, gentlemen. Fall is is here. Yeah, yeah yes, it, it is. is. What uh, what, pro com what uh, projects you got going like, on? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, so what projects you got going on? You got fall projects up there at your home? Um, not so much. It's mostly just like moving firewood closer to the house so that we can keep yeah. the place warm inside, you that, know? That's a fall project for sure. That is a fall project for sure. We also cleaned out the fire pit to get ready for some good fall fire pit action. Uh-huh. Okay. That's pretty much it, though. Other than that, it's just kind of, you know, typical scooping poop and things of that nature and the chicken coop and the goat pen. It's lovely out here. How about you and uh, a crock pot? Oh, I love crockpotting. Ted and I are crockpot uh, brother and sister, I think. We both ad adore crockpot recipes this time of year. I am firing it up Saturday. Oh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just thinking of yes. all, the, all the fall things, you know, that you kind of fall all into fall after, uh, after summer is done. Music-wise, though, it doesn't seem like summer songs are fun songs. Always. Oh, You're going to have a good time. The sun you know, is shining. Yeah, We're I mean, doing things. Even Christmas music is upbeat, and a lot of people find it to be happy for them, uh, depending on the... Christmas music. If they like like Christmas or not? I mean, you like, I'm just not saying so. Silent night. See, I think I think fall. There's a lot of somber ones. That, fall, that's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. That's, but, but it's Christmas, so we get it. But you're right. Summer's real upbeat. Spring typically kind of upbeat. Fall kind of just fall. like yeah. It's like NFL theme music. It's fall. It's it can kind of go either way. It really can. It can be a little bit slow and sad, or it can be a little bit of a you know hype song. Well, fall has the trouble too, because you got the heavy hitters coming up. You got Halloween. Thanksgiving, Monster Christmas. Mash, right? Yeah, so there's there's other stuff coming down the pipe. That's so these true. are uh, these are ten fall songs. So all smashing pumpkins. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, these are ten fall songs to start the season on Sit and Spin. Number ten. Because I'm still in love with you, <laughs> I wanna see you dance again. I bet you do. Oh, oh Neil Young, Harvest Moon. I mean, it's right wow. there in the name. There it is. Do, 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 there it is. Do, 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 do. It doesn't make you think of fall when you hear Neil Young. Well, this song in particular. It makes me feel like I should try heroin and yeah, get yeah. off the couch for like three days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I have to confess, I saw Neil Young in concert once and got a little bit tipsy and cried like a baby. Oh, no, no. During this song I did, I or cried. Neil Young? Not from this song. <laughs> What do you mean? It was you were definitely a, not Harvest Moon. It was a different one. I can't even remember. You're a little tipsy. I was a little bit tipsy. Neil Young got the waterworks going. <laughs> <laughs> These are ten fall songs to start the season. Nine, number nine. That, that makes sense. Yeah. But do you have to? Does it have to be in your title for people to know the fall song? You it know helps. what I'm saying? I mean, if you're from if you're from Seattle, the song should just be called Rain. <laughs> yeah. Fill in the month. Like the rain November song is not necessary. From Zeppelin, sure. All the uh, all the big ones. Everything that Ryan plays uh, when it starts pouring down rain. We're sitting in the office, so it's like you know, like I don't know, Mad Season. Right, or, you're right, man. A nutshell, or something like that. You're like, oh, it gets no. real Seattle real quick when oh, it rains. Man. The gloom of Castle. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Ten fall songs to start the season on Sitting Fit. Eight, number eight. Sean Henley will get me 
me snapping a little bit. And that is definitely, I mean, it's literally the end of summer, right? Yeah, that's basically what he's saying. Yeah. It's right there. But I like what he said. Like, he's not saying it's fall. He's saying it's, it's the end of summer. See, the Correct. difference is he's in California. I know. Well, they only have two seasons. <laughs> so what is he What is he upset about? He had to look at the calendar. I don't know. If the, he's still got his top down in the video. He's, he's right. <laughs> right. He's in a convertible for crying out loud. Yeah, the girls just are in sundresses. You yeah. can just play this when you're leaving the beach. <laughs> that, there you go. It's the end of the good time. But yeah. you can still go to the beach is the problem. You're going to remember these times forever. Forever, ten, uh, Mike. Ten fall songs to start the season on Set and Spend. Seven, number seven. Who's this depressing old son of a bitch? This is you too. Who ah, I yeah. really, you know, if I had to pick my least favorite band personally, <laughs> it would probably be this band. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> least favorite band. I don't think I've ever heard you say that. That is awkward. I'm not, I know, I'm it just saying, sounds rough. I'm not saying they're a bad right. band. They're just my least favorite band. I know they're one of the biggest, greatest bands I'm ever not on the saying planet. They're it's just not my thing. Sarah, that's like going this to a restaurant. This song is really depressing. I'm not saying your food is bad. I'm saying I don't like anything on my plate. I just don't want to eat here. <laughs> right. yeah. I just want to eat what you cook. But it's not that you're a bad wow. cook. <laughs> We're starting the fall season off right. Ten fall songs to start the season on Sit and Spin. Sit's number six. September morn. <laughs> we danced until the night became a brand new day. She got her braces stuck in his chest hair. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. all night. They're on coke. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't oh, help because today it's raining. I know. But there's also the fall is beautiful. <laughs> Those crisp mornings, college football. September. Oh, yeah. That's what Neil's talking about. Dan holding a beautiful woman <laughs> in the autumn foliage. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> I know what he's saying, all right? I feel it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing out that weed blower, <laughs> leaf blower. <laughs> The sounds of a September morn. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, did they have leaf blowers in 1979? Oh, but that's what no. I wake up to every morning. Well, it depends. Wow. Because Leaf Garrett was a very popular uh, act back then, so I'm going to say yes. There you go. What in the hell? It's 7 o'clock. These are 10 fall songs to start the season. Five, number five. Now, I know, I know September's in the title, but listen, man, this feels like summer. Yeah. You know, really, Mike? I put this well, on the level. Technically, technically, it's the 21st night of September, and for us, we had the fall equinox on the 23rd. So this Suck is on that, Mike. technically a summer song. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. So I'd put this kind of like on the on the level of boys with summer. It's the end of summer. Okay. It's like, all right. All like, right, all right. College football's coming yeah. in. Yeah. Crock pots. <laughs> Days get shorter. We're hyped up. We're hyped dark. Up. PSLs. <laughs> Ten fall songs to start the season. Number four. Working on a night move. Oh, I'm yeah. Give me that cedar, baby. You want to smell his beard, don't you? I do. <laughs> yeah. What makes it a, so- a, a fall uh, song? Ted and, I have, t- Ted and I have a friend that karaoke's this song from time to time, and it just ruins everything for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a karaoke Let's see does. her do it. Thanks for that. You can just say Brad, Taryn. <laughs> it's not Brad. <laughs> it's not Brad. <laughs> yeah. Ten fall songs to start the season. Three, number three. Oh, Maggie, I couldn't oh, yeah. Ted, did the crowd go crazy for this when you saw Rod Stewart a couple weeks back? Oh, Mike, you were there, too. There, yeah. That, I look, I'm on a Rod Stewart kick. I listened to it at, I don't know, midnight after that Ford race Saturday night. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. I imagine they went crazy for every song Rod Stewart. Yes. You said you did all hits, right? Mm-hmm. Like, no filler, no weird beats. Well, and a lot of covers as well. It's not Correct. like he played a whole lot of his own songs. He like, definitely played this what one. What did but- he cover? I'm just curious. Like, oh. Oh, I can't remember all the big ones. We were pretty bombed that night. So. <laughs> okay, well, it's not that. It's just it, it's him doing covers, but also right. some of his most famous songs. I think are covers. Ah, yeah. So it's okay. not like it's unheard. Of. Ten fall songs to start the season on Sin City. Two, number two. You know the night's magic seem to whisper and hate. You know the song. 
Van Morrison, get that jazz flute in there. <laughs> As Ryan Castle would say, uh, fun fact, Van Morrison, not a nice human being. Really? No. No. Not even close. What? No. No. No, not nice. Well, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. I used to be a big fan, and then I tried to interview him one time. Oh, really? Like there's a story behind this. No, he's just not a nice guy. He's just like, he's not a happy individual. How do you sing the song and you're not a happy guy? I don't know. That's what I thought. Like, how could you be your Van Morrison? Everyone loves you. Why are you so angry? Like, what happened to you? Look, find out Kermit the Frog, like, smokes eight packs of cigarettes a day. Hey, shut up, kid. <laughs> These are 10 I'm on camera. To start to see as we made it to number one. Right. Yeah, great tune, man. Leaves are falling. Swinging the hammer of the gods. All around. I think he's referring to his penis. <laughs> Ramble on. There you go. The Ramble hammer on. of the gods. That's a Thank big you, uh, Thank you, Taryn, for getting us ready for fall. We had no idea based on the weather that he was even coming. You know what I mean? I'm so ready. I'm bundled up. I've layered. This is the new normal for us. Oh, All yeah. right, we'll, uh, we'll see you coming up at uh, 6 o'clock. Also on the way, we'll drink a toast with a shot of the day. You are listening to The Men's Room. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All right, coming up, we'll drink a toast with a shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way at 5.50. But first, quick check in with Mike Hogg with some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right. Thank you, Miles. 219 dogs and their owners broke a world record after they all attended a premiere of the Paw Patrol movie in L.A. No. Yeah. That's a lot of animals. Well, you know what? Dogs like watching television. They can, yeah. Whatever whatever captivates them. I had a cat that loved Bob's Burgers. Nice. I don't know if it was the voice actor or whatever it was that captivated Larry. How about the cat that watched Mike Tyson box? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, but uh, when my uh, when I go see my uncle, he's got a boxer. He puts on Animal Planet and, like, the dog guru guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not Caesar. Is it Caesar? But yeah, Caesar Milan. Either, yeah. way, either way, he has a camera inside his living room. So he can always check and see. And the dog is just very upright, very attentive. And this watch, guy doesn't know at and, all what he's talking and about. also, like, it, say it's 11 o'clock and the show changes. Yeah. If he doesn't like the show, then he's done. He lays down. Right. Sleeps for half an hour, then gets back up if a show he likes is on. Ha! Yeah, it's crazy. It's strange. Dogs are weird, man. So my dog, if there's a doorbell on a TV show or commercial, mm -hmm. she's at the door barking, which yeah, cracks me that for a while. Uh, but if there's a dog or, or basically any animal on screen, yeah. she jumps up and she always runs and looks behind the TV screen to figure out where the animal's coming where from. Where is this damn thing? I almost feel bad because she's so confused. Like, I see it coming toward me. Right. And in her mind, this is an animal. And I've walked behind this weird black frame square thing you have, and I do not see the back of the animal. What is this weird black magic you guys are doing? I got to be careful when I'm uh, scrolling TikTok sometimes because, uh, you know, they have like cats on there that'll meow for whatever reason. They uh -oh. want something or they're getting into something. And my cats perk up and sometimes <laughs> they do coon up just a little bit like, oh, okay, sorry, I'll just skip it. <laughs> right. My bad. <laughs> I just don't know. I guess, I mean, it depends. If you have your dog trained correctly, but like, I don't know. That would seem annoying being in a movie theater and they're watching cartoon dogs. Yeah. Like, I, like I could theater, fathom yeah. a dog being into nature or other live animals. But I'm like, a cartoon dog? Actually, I will say that I watched something on, like, Discovery, and it was a lion. Obviously, my dog has never seen a lion. Mm -hmm. But my dog understood you don't want to mess with the lion. Don't like it, big kitty. It just showed, like, <laughs> the lion kind of popped up out of the grass and was kind of trotting along. It didn't do any carnage, nothing like that. Sure. Documentary, they're showing the lion, and my dog was kind of, like, sunk back into the sofa. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you recognize that if we do see this, you ain't trying to mess with that. 82% of Americans say their travel spending will either be the same or increase next year. We don't plan on slowing down as far as the travel spending goes. I think half of that, too, is just traveling is not getting cheaper either. Well, yeah, part of it, <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you have to pay to do the thing. But man, when you travel, have fun. You bet. Cut loose. You probably already went broke just to book the trip. No kidding. You already know you're going to lose money. You're going to take it in the you know where, right? Just, that's the beauty of uh, uh, that's have fun. booking months in advance is you take the one lump when you book it, and then you save up throughout that entire time. And take the other lump when you're there. When you get yep. there. <laughs> no, no, this vacation's paid for. It's practically free now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you feel better about it. Though. You do. Tinder has a new select tier that'll cost users a minuscule $499 a month. What does select wow. mean? 
basically, from what I saw just in the little bits that I found was scrolling by it, you do have to qualify to be on here, but it's a it's a select kind of a dating service. Well, where, but what does that mean? Like, what? How, how is someone select? My, I have no idea. I didn't look They're into it. Super hot. I mean, basically, like, it's like the the top percent of people that are on Tinder. So if you get matched with all the time, like I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. I don't have to listen. It's just you would have to be like, no, I'm good looking enough to be on here. I can just look at your profile and be like, all right, then people are swiping for him all the time. He's in the top, like, okay. whatever okay. percent. All right. Did you he pay could... $500 a month to be here, too? But um, remember, though, this has already gone on. They're just services that normal people don't know about because yes. they don't tell us. Why wouldn't they tell us, Ted? Because <laughs> I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> We're ugly and poor. I left one bad review of you, dude. Don't don't take Aww. it so personally. No, I told Aww. you. Somebody I knew used to play in the NFL. It's like, I've never heard of this. He's like, yeah, you're not pro athletes. You don't know Instagram models and, like, you're just kind of random dudes. I mean, think about it. Everyone's <laughs> making a big deal. I don't tell the Swift to see him. What's his name? Uh, Kelsey, right? Travis. Yes. Travis, Travis Kelsey. There's a reason they get to meet each other. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. I don't know either of them. She's gotten a lot of phone numbers that she's just thrown away. What happened to the media not picking up on the fact that both both brothers in an interview said it's Kels? I know, right? They all said, like, please, just drop Kels. that. Because you, it's this my own name. <laughs> no. We're comfortable That's saying like Kelsey. The Ted Smythe. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Mike Croc. Right. Steve the Pill Hill. The Pill. Piles Montgomery. Like, it's <laughs> going to call you Piles. <laughs> yeah. We're going to call him Piles. I, I think disease. maybe they just get tired of correcting people. Correcting it. Yeah, and uh, they're, I mean, they're Kelsey arguably problems. two of the most famous football players in the yeah. country. So well, we like, can't pronounce their name. That's you know what, what I'm saying? Like, I'll tell you what, bro. If I had their contract or if I had Travis's rings, but you can call me anything. Right. Right. I was about to say, yeah, screw up Smith. I'm call fine with that. Call, call me poopy face. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever uh, washed a dish in your life? Sure. Never. What, what if I told you there were some mistakes that you were making? The I said we're married. Oh. The oh. You are not wrong. Ten <laughs> common mistakes to avoid when washing dishes. I remember as a kid, I went and visited my grandpa who lived out in the country. And on the first morning I was there, he made us a plate of bacon and eggs. And I noticed a film-like substance on the plates and asked him, Hey, Grandpa, are these plates clean? And he said, They're as clean as cold water can get them. Just go ahead and finish your meal. Now, later on, I was getting ready to go and Grandpa's dog wouldn't let me pass. And I said, Grandpa, your dog won't let me by. Grandpa turned and yelled at the dog, Cold water! Go lie down. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he did that. <laughs> I looked away and said, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Ten common mistakes to avoid when washing dishes. Uh, letting the dishes pile up in the sink shows up at the bottom of the list. Well, it's just more work, right? Correct. And when I was a kid, we, we kind of shifted the monthly chore. And so once every... every three months, we would end up having to do dishes. And as kids, you put it off until the last possible of second. Course, until there's a mountain, an, an Everest of dishes that you then need to just spend an Which hour cleaning up. Which is why you up. hate doing right. it. Yeah. And then, now that I meet my wife, who refuses to go to bed with a dirty kitchen, it is so much easier just to clean up those dishes on that of. Because nothing is crusted on there, nothing is dried up, nothing has grabbed a hold. It is a lot easier just to wipe I don't it all away. exactly refuse to go to bed with the dirty kitchen, but what I've found, and it just proves to be true. When you wake up in the morning, because I don't feel like being up, but I'm up, right? When I walk into the kitchen and it's a disaster, mm -hmm. I feel like my day has started wrong. So what I have realized is, you know what, ma'am? You can even let everyone go to bed. Yeah, but a couple of hits onto the bone, smoke a cigarette, and go wash the dishes. There you go. Just, man, don't wake up to it. I, You know what's even worse is sometimes it's not even a bunch of them. I'll just leave one pan in there. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday morning, for whatever reason, be like, all right, run the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time to go. <laughs> Speaking I, of which. I don't know. Oh, go ahead. Dishwashing items that should be hand washed. To certain materials and delicate items like wood, crystal, and uh, certain pots and pans should not be washed in the dishwasher because they may get damaged by the detergent or the high heat. Thank you, Mike. My wife makes fun of me because I will hand wash anything. You bet. And I, I'm just, I'm a stickler for it. It just, it is what it is. But she's I, like, you can put it in the dishwasher. I'm like, I can put you in the dishwasher. I understand that. What I just let me wash it my hand. I've always said that the dishwasher is a sanitizer more than anything. Look, I feel Agreed. better grabbing a plate out of the dishwasher because it's nice. It's hot. It's it's got that dryness to it. It feels clean. Other things, it's like, 
I just I just need to scrub this off. I need to yep. I need to see the suds on this thing and wipe it off, and I need to see it clean. I think well, this is one of those cases where both things are true. Correct. <laughs> like I just bought recently. I don't know why it took me so long, but I actually got wood utensils just oh, for like sauces and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like, right? I was sitting there Saturday, and I was like, I can't put this in there. But I've also done a head chef report too, where it's like you don't have to pre rinse everything. Just that's, let the dishwasher work. I know. I, I know. think about you every time I pre rinse. <laughs> I know this has been debunked. My comfort level is supreme. Correct. I still keep my uh, ketchup in the fridge. Overloading your dishwasher shows up on the list. As overcrowding the dishwasher can impact the cleanliness of your dishes and damage the appliance. When dishes are too close or improperly loaded, including silverware nestling together, they will not be properly clean since spray and detergent cannot reach each surface. Thanks to my wife, I I have learned this. Mm -hmm. Geek! Why Why did you put all the silverware here? I'm like, well, it's the silverware. It's like, oh, my God, we got to run it again. It's like somehow marrying a dad. Like, how do, how do I still get told what I'm doing wrong? You will always find out what you're doing wrong. Yeah. Well, and everybody just has different things. They do. Right? They so, do. like, right, some stuff that, like, I don't mind. Other people, it would drive other people crazy. Yep. Some things, I've dated girls where I'm just like, how do you keep doing this? <laughs> like, you, you, you're not dumb. You know, what you know, but, like, she just didn't mind. Right. Just doesn't care enough to let it warrior. Yeah. Ten common mistakes to avoid when washing dishes. Uh, storing dishes before drying them. It says when there's still moisture on the dishes, make sure to wipe them down before putting them away. I'm pretty anal about that. Because uh, putting damp dishes in cabinets or pantries can be a recipe for mildew and may even damage the interior. Uh, put them in upside down. Agreed. Glasses as well. I agree with that. That is a huge, huge thing. Yes. Yep. I'll you, Matt, I cooked for years. Maryland, believe it or not, has the second strictest health code beyond California. No kidding. Oh, oh man. You had to be recertified every year, and they came in to get three surprise visits a year. So they they put all this stuff in their head, so I'm so anal at home. It drives the rest of my family nuts. My goodness. All right. I can't believe what. I mean, that would just be. It would, you Look, gotta put it up, the the cups upside down, or they think, fill with water. Ted? Correct. It's yeah, obvious. Yeah. You think, Ted? <clears throat> All right. Not using the correct water temperature. It says using water that is too hot can hurt your hands and even cause burns. Well, Me- hopefully you know that. <laughs> Meanwhile, using water that is too cold may not cut through the grime as easily, and you may need to use more elbow grease to get things sparkling. It says uh, the ideal water temperature is 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So make sure that you grab that thermometer. And make sure that that water temperature is right. I'm never great. washing my dishes that hot. <laughs> <laughs> Not to the point that it hurts. Right. Come on, man. Somebody here makes a good point. They go, if you don't pre-rinse the dishes, you just have to clean the foul filter in the dishwasher mm-hmm. more often. Mm-hmm. All right. Right. That makes sense. Cleaning dishes in a dirty sink. Well, it says it's best to wash dishes in a clean area for the best results and the most sanitary No dishes. kidding. You don't take a bath in someone else's dirty bath water, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to tell people that? Apparently, uh, using too much sho- uh, too much soap shows up on the list. It says using too much soap not only wastes pr- uh, products, but can leave a film or residue on dishes. With most brands and formulas, you only need a few drops for a load of dishes. Overuse of dish soap usually won't damage dishes, but will cause more work as you'll wind up having to clean off the residue. Okay. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, and I, whatever reason, I've just always used Dawn Blue. Same. Damn right. Love it. They have a bottle now that's like ketchup. You just oh, yeah. try, when it stops, you don't have to flip a cap. You just sit it there. It's ready to rock. Got one, brother. I love that thing. Good man. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Me too. I uh, <laughs> love that thing. Here we go. Pre-rinsing dishes before using the dishwasher. Dishwasher detergent is designed to target any leftover food particles on dishes, so cleaning dishes beforehand can actually inhibit the effectiveness of the detergent. Really? Which I don't get how it inhibits the effectiveness right. of the detergent. It's Sorry I rinsed my car. Right. It's a soap that you're spraying on your dish. And just because it didn't get the fight that it expected, all of a sudden it just gives up and doesn't do a damn thing? Come on. I'm disputing that one, head chef. I can tell. Well, Mike, you sound like a seven-year-old man, and I love it. I don't understand how it works. Like, well, I, look. What are you going to tell? Oh, they didn't get the fight they were looking and, for? Well, guess what, dude? Throw the same number uh, of punches <laughs> and fight better. And hear me out. I still do it, too. I just, like, I used to be, like, really psycho about it. And now I'm like, well, I ain't reading all this stuff. Let's let the dishwasher <laughs> right. let the big dog eat. <laughs> Let Russ cook, whatever you want to call it. Is he going to decide that the war is over if there's no fight right on the front line? Yeah. However, this is the number one most common mistake to avoid when washing dishes. It's going to shock you. Do not use a dirty sponge. 
<laughs> Dirty sponges can harbor bacteria and bad odors. So if not properly cleaned, mm -hmm. it could spread bacteria and odors to dishes. Not good, it will. It's, just, it's best to clean your sponges every couple of days and replace it all together uh, every one to two weeks. Yeah. I've known people that either put it in the in the dishwasher itself or in the or in the washing machine. That's not a bad idea. The load, man. Yeah, it's kind of smart. You bet. Gotta get a little. Oh, I bucketed that thing, too. I never do that good of a shot. That was great. <laughs> There's a flock of sheep that broke into a greenhouse, and you will never believe what they got into. What did they get into, Mike? I'll tell you all about it at 550. Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming up at 550. In the meantime, it's going to contest on the line for Profile This at 206-803-ROCKET. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Therapy is known to be extremely helpful, but have you ever tried eavesdropping on someone else's problems? Listen to the new podcast, Say More, with Dr. Sheila, starring Amy Poehler as the world-renowned self-proclaimed couples therapist. My mother will come over when she says she will. Knowing that she's always going to be there is really nice for me because I don't have to make my own cereal. Listen to Say More with Dr. Sheila on the free Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, it's Mike Hawk. Want more Men's Room content? Follow the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app and check out my live stream, A Moment with Mike Hawk and Nothing in Particular with Steve the Thrill Hill. Going live Thursdays and Fridays at 1 exclusively on the Men's Room page of the Odyssey app. Have we made it to drink attack? Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Big time it is, and as usual, we head to see Drink Task and Steve at Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. And today, we have to toast a uh, listener of ours, one Trung Lee in Sacramento, for alerting me to the story, which I truly appreciate. So today, we toast an anonymous woman from the Philippines. Now, the woman in question, she is a devout Buddhist, as are 500 million to 1 billion people around the world. So nothing new. Anyway, for four years... I'm sorry, four years ago, she bought a green Buddha statue. And every day for the last four years, she is committed to praying in front of it, which is a good thing if you're going to buy it. That's actually kind of the point as far as Buddhism goes. But recently, a friend came over and explained that her green Buddha statue was not Buddha. It turns out the green Buddha statue that she had been praying in front of for four years daily, every day, because she's about, it was Shrek. <laughs> what? <laughs> she she did not realize she's unfamiliar with Shrek. She thought it was a porcelain statue. She thought it was a Buddha, right? Kind of fat and all that, blah, blah, blah. Green, anyway, bald, green. She bought a Shrek. She would kneel down before the sink every morning, very devout, before she went on about her day. And her friend came over one morning and just said, basically, why do you have an image of Shrek here? What it was? She's like, I don't know who Shrek is. She's like, that, it ain't Buddha. That's Shrek. So for four years, she has devoutly voted oh, in front of Shrek. That's not a bad you thing. You see it? Let me see. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, why, why I mean, not? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's Shrek. Honestly. But I will He does. But also, he's, he's not wearing a, normal Shrek he's clothes. He's in a Buddha pose. Right. And he's like wearing like a... He has the look, big I dig antenna it. or I, ears, I, I man. It. It's a cool Shrek. I would know it's Shrek. She did not. So, yeah. She, uh, for four years, every day, devoutly praying in front of Shrek. Yeah. It's just, I'm just, I was just <laughs> picturing a, just a Shrek doll. Nope. I'm like, nope, at nope, least nope. that one's a, supposed to look like Shrek is Buddha. Hey, look, I, I will cut her slack on that for sure, but I still find it hilarious. And when her oh, friend's like, dude, it, stop kneeling in front of that. <laughs> so we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! Okay. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. Hey, Stephen Throw Hook, could you please, everyone? Our Profile This is played. A short can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. 
earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Thomas. Welcome to the men's room. Boo, bitches. Boo. All right, Thomas. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to you. Thomas, you understand how this year game is played? Sir, yes, sir, I do. Fantastic. You have a choice of one of three stories. Today, we offer you the wonderful world of drugs. We have Hit Me With Your Best Shot, where you guess the unconventional weapon that someone chose to use as a weapon. And finally, Animalize This, where you guess the animal responsible for causing the problem. Uh, well, I don't know much about all those drug things that the guys always talk about. So, I like animals. Let's go in. Thank you for explaining why you made your decision, because I was going to ask you. Now I don't have to. I don't want a hamburger. All right, here's the story. Fries. We go to Indiana, where workers at an Indiana car wash made a shocking discovery while examining the front bumper of a customer's car. Now, the woman took her car to Mike's Car Wash in Fort Wayne to be cleaned after a bird got stuck in the front grill. And employees were looking at the front bumper when they spotted an entirely different animal. So the car wash workers, they took the vehicle next door to Jiffy Lube, where employees called the Fort Wayne Animal Control for assistance. Meanwhile, the Jiffy Lube workers set about disassembling the front of the car just to reach the animal. Jiffy Lube worker Dalton Brennick, he said, quote, It was definitely an odd day at work. Last thing I expected was to be pulling apart a front bumper to remove an animal. And he said the animal was not eager to leave the vehicle. Quote, he was cute, but definitely mad that we were trying to take him from his warm home. We ended up having to take off the front skid plate to give him room to leave the engine bay. After we got him out, he ran to the back of the car and hopped into the rear suspension. We had to take off the left rear tire to get his ass out. His ass out, I added, not an actual quote. Anyway, <laughs> the animal, nicknamed Mike by the rescuers, was taken away by Fish and Wildlife to be checked for injuries. Now, what was the cute animal in the front of the woman's car? She thought it was a bird. It was not. Was it a groundhog, a chipmunk, a squirrel, or a kitten? So groundhog, chipmunk, squirrel, or kitten. What did this woman actually have stuck in front of a car that was not a bird? Oh, wow. Those are oh, kind of cute. Chipmunk. Good lord. Every day with you, man. Groundhog, chipmunk, squirrel, or kitten. Thomas, I'm going squirrel. You're right. That's what I was going to ask. Because what do you guys think? I'm going squirrel. You're going squirrel. What do you think, Ted? I I mean, squirrel could be it. It could be, I mean, look, it could be any of them. It could be any of them, man. Groundhog seems too big. You know if you'd have a groundhog. But also, they had to take a tire off. I don't know why I'm going chipmunk. Chipmunk. Alvin! <laughs> you know, I was actually kind of thinking chipmunk, too, because they're super cute, but uh, kids, they're, they're not going to fight you. They're just going to hang out and want to come and love you. And, uh, but squirrels are just going to run away. They'll get, get I don't the want the hamburger. Here, but, I don't want the fruit. So what do you think, ma'am? I don't want the milk. Yeah, I'll go chipmunk. 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 All right. I'm going to chipmunk. What was in the girl of that car? Was it a groundhog, a chipmunk, a squirrel, or a kitten? We'll find out next. That was a tease. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. It's Superstart Battery Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get up to a $25 gift card after rebate with the purchase of select Superstart batteries. Our professional parts people will test your old battery for free and recommend the right battery for your vehicle. For power, performance, and reliability, choose Superstar Batteries only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Categories of animal eyes hits on profile. This workers at an Indiana car wash. They found an animal on the grill bumper kind of hidden in there. They said it was cute but mad. They got it out. Then the animal fled to the back. Correct. It went under the back bumper tire area. Question is, what was this cute little guy? Groundhog, chipmunk, squirrel, or a kitten? And, Thomas, that is the very question that we posed to you. Let us start with Miles Montgomery. Mm -hmm. You went with the squirrel? I think it was squirrel. Cute, all that stuff. Sure. I'm afraid it was not a squirrel. Now, Thomas, you and D. Ted Smith agreed and went with Alvin. Alvin. Thank you. Instead, it was the chipmunk. 
I'm afraid no. it was no. not a chipmunk. Believe it or not, it was an animal too big to be there, the groundhog. Get out of here. Really? Yeah, she thought she hit a bird. Took it to the car wash. She's like, yeah, yeah, man, no problem. It's a freaking groundhog, man. They're not small. They are not small. I don't know how she confused that with a bird, but whatever. I wasn't there, but yeah, it was it was a groundhog. Good test. Now for all TV news all the time, time for TV time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV time with Ted. Ah. Everybody in here enjoy the office. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, very funny show. Everybody loved it. Honestly, The Office is one of those shows that, like, I feel like everybody likes it. Like, it's even Seinfeld. Like, there's people like me. There's Seinfeld people. There's some people that are not in their 40s, so they just don't get it. Sure. Or some people don't like it. Friends is kind of, a lot of people like it now, I guess. Like I always say, I watched it. I don't care for the reruns. But, like, The Office, even I'll put it on sometimes. Like, oh, yeah, this is a fun show. And you still laugh. Yeah. How would you feel about a reboot of The Office? Well, the one we watched was already one, right? It was. I mean, so technically, it, right? It was. It was a U.S. version, but it, here's my thing with this. I think, the, didn't, did Ricky Gervais not write for this for our version? I don't think he wrote for our version, but I'm pretty sure he had a lot to do with the English version, which was the original version. The problem, to me, before you go on, is just Steve Carell absolutely determined that he's the guy that should play that role, Right. Rain Wilson, absolutely determined, and he should be the guy that plays Dwight. You can reboot it, but if you don't have these same actors, I just don't know. I don't know. Remember, Rain Wilson wanted to, he was trying to be Michael Scott. Correct. Yeah, yeah that's what he wanted to do. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, if you've never seen it before, and so you don't relate these actors to those roles, maybe it works. But that said, I do believe the actors had a lot to do, had almost everything to do with why we found it funny. More than the writing or anything else. The way they portrayed their characters. I I won't disagree with you. I mean, I'm with you. I think those actors helped it's, a lot. Right, I think it's a tough it's a tough thing. The the one thing this one has, because right, people are kind of split on it. Some people are like, we shouldn't do it. Uh Miles, you're right. Like I don't know if I'd call it a reboot, but it was the English version. Then we had the American version. Yeah. The thing that helps is uh, this one's being... So some people are like, I don't know if we need it, but it's being uh, developed by the original showrunner, Greg Daniels. Basically, nobody knows what else is going on. He's talked about it, uh, reboot, for a few years now, but said, my biggest concern would be disappointing the fans. People will watch the entire series, then roll right into watching it again. And to me, that means we ended it properly. Okay. I think yeah. you could do a different version of, as far as trying to sell it to the public. If you say, okay, this time we're in Little Rock, Arkansas, it's a different company, same Ooh. general dynamic. Yeah. Then I go, okay, I get more of a spinoff style. But I mean, you could also run it into like current time. Yeah. I mean, for, as opposed to just be redoing it. Look, Hawaii 5 0, to its credit, when they rebooted that one, I mean, that, that thing's still rolling. Well, Magnum PI, Hawaii 5 one of the beauties they had is that decades had passed. Correct. You know, so, I don't know, man, the office, I just feel like it's a tough thing. And one of the other things, too, is, you know, like Hawaii 5 Magnum PI, and some of these shows they've remade weren't on TV Land or whatever the hell it's called now, constantly being reshown. You can find the office anytime. So, even if you didn't watch it when it was originally out. You know, if my kid started watching it now, he'd laugh at the show. He's smart enough to get it. But I think he would have a hard time accepting. And it's stupid because it's all make-believe, but you have a hard time accepting different actors playing the roles that you already know. Sure. I don't know. They just redo everything now. So I'm like, I don't know. Reboot it. It's there's definitely, shot. right? Like, and I found with Netflix, there's definitely a few shows I like, but they didn't get long enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, I wish they'd reboot that or bring it back. Sure, sure. I'd like to, like to see what happens there. Yeah, you could move it to another city. You obviously would have different actors. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think you could bring back some of the actors and connect and still have it connect because they, they might want to... They might and this is their new office. Maybe they, and they, like exactly. And they, they might have a wanna, new location or something. And they might want to do it as opposed to, you know, Rain Wilson, Steve Carell. Like, a lot of those actors have gotten so big time I can't imagine they'll want to go back to redo that role. Right. Now, they could show up here and there, but probably wouldn't be uh, like, hey, let's get down there and jump on that. All right, Ryan Seacrest, he's going to be the uh, new host of uh, The Wheel of Fortune. That's a good answer. He said, what are you going to change about it when you, when you take over next year? Nothing. <laughs> says, quote, with this game show, it's such a success. Has been for generations. You don't mess with it. Just don't mess with it. Just go out there and say good evening and let's play. Yeah. 
Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, well, he's, we, not gonna, he's not going to bring his dynamic personality to the table. <laughs> no. I think he did that with, live with uh, him and uh, Kelly. I was going to say, he was, he, yeah, he was he, a real talk show host there yeah. for a while. And like, look, he started in radio. So, I mean, he's been doing interviews. I mean, he has some personality. Mm-hmm. You know, I think American Idol was just kind of bring people in and out. And then sure, I mean, I mean, all look, the stuff he does. It's nothing against him. It's not that. No. On this particular game show, my personal opinion, he's just not the right guy. And I don't say that because I think he is good and or bad at his job. It's just that you're Ryan Seacrest. So, like, you know, a lot of these game shows, and I always maintain this, we ended up liking the host because we did not know them from anything else. Alex Trebek, Bob Barker. Bob Barker started in radio. But unless you're 100 years old, you didn't know Right, that. you didn't listen to you're, Bob Barker. My money right. says you're introduced to him as the host. He's got a he's got a uh, financial investment into Merv Griffin. I would almost guarantee. Well. I think he already does. I think, yeah, yeah, I think he already so does. So it's kind of part of his, just, his, his brand already. Yeah. Even but also, the Wheel of Fortune's super popular. I know a lot of people that like it, and every once in a while there'd be some zinger, right? But I, I don't know that, like, we're just kind of used to those hosts because they host those shows, but like... And that's all we know him for. I mean, right, like, like, Pat Sajak, it's like, I, did, I don't know, is the Wheel of Fortune that successful? Is he would make one joke at the end of Anna? No, <laughs> right? it's not, but somehow you, you, it's, it's like a comfort food. It's like mashed potatoes. There's nothing spectacular about it. You just happen to like it, right? So, true. he was that guy. Ryan Seacrest, it's just... Him or Steve Harvey or any of these guys. And again, it's not a slight against them, but there's a certain expectation you have when they're going to be there, right? So there's a lot of people freaking out about Jeopardy when Alice Trebek died. Ken Jennings, in my opinion, perfect guy to follow up. Yeah. You know, he does a good job hosting. He has his own little tweak on it, but he pretty much keeps it what it was. Yeah. All right. Speaking of Hollywood and all this stuff, some good news and kind of halfway good news. So union uh, leaders, uh, basically in the Hollywood studios, they rented a tentative agreement on Sunday to end the screenwriter's strike after nearly five months. Yeah. No deal yet, right? Still not done. Uh, the writer, they, they announced it uh, with a joint statement with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, blah, blah, blah. It's the group that represents all the studios, streaming services, and this and that. They still got to figure it out. Basically, this is, this is all you need to know. It's getting closer, yeah. right? They hadn't been to the table together in months, so it's nice they're back there. The actors still aren't sitting at the table. Right. This is the writers, so that, not this, the actors. Right, right, this is just the writers. So they're not going to pick it anymore, but they're still gotta, they still got to wait until everything's signed. you got to vote on it within the union mm-hmm. and get that all approved. Then you can go back in there. Now, with the actors out, you could see like late-night shows, right? They could fire back up yep. because... Oh, I, so don't, they, I don't know if Kimmel counts. And SNL can basically come back. Right, because a lot of those people, like like Fallon, like they do other stuff, but they're not really like actors in a main TV show anymore. Right. right? They just do that. But their writers are massively important, and, and they need them back. Like, so basically, they could come back. We, should, we could see some late night shows, but overall TV production is still... Going to take a minute. It's going to be a slow roll. Yeah, but the good news is... It's going to be a slow roll. I mean, I, I get... Well, I probably, you're probably going to say what I was saying. At least they got back to the table. A joint statement says a lot. Yeah. Right? That's the longer story. A joint... We at least agreed to give you this much information. You go like, okay, they're, they're, they're about to figure it out. Yeah, and it's tough, too. I mean, if you're not even going to sit there at the table and kind of talk about it... Right. Nothing gets done. Right. <laughs> you're not negotiating. But oftentimes, Frank, that's how... Uh, you know, I... Say it all the time. Grow up in union. Like, this this how negotiations go. Right. They're not they're not fun. Nobody likes it. That's how they go. All right, let's see. Paulie Shore. Could he play Richard Simmons in a biopic? I saw his picture and I thought, yes. The issue is, is that Paulie Shore really wants to do it. Uh, he went on Instagram, right, posted the picture, says he's been playing phone tag with Richard in an effort to make it happen. He's asking for, basically, Paulie Shore wants to do this, yeah. and I don't think he's wrong. I think he could do the role. I think it'd be pretty interesting. Mike, I don't know if your parents are into it. My mother loved Richard Simmons. Everyone that saw him loved it because he was just that guy. You know, always positive energy. He was sweating whatever. to the oldies. <laughs> I mean, it's funny now because he he actually, from what I can remember, had some good ideas. It was mostly just about like, we just got to move and yeah, like move. have fun while we're doing some exercise, right? <laughs> I don't think he was, you know, reinventing the wheel there, having people. Not at you, all. you didn't have to bench 500 pounds. <laughs> Uh, and you know, Paulie Shore wants to do it. He says, I can morph into this guy. The problem is, 
Richard Simmons, TMZ, they said, like, basically, he's not interested. Nothing to do with Pauly Shore. Richard just enjoy, enjoying his life out of the spotlight, and he doesn't want to change that. I would also think he was so popular. He was the basis of so many rumors for years mm-hmm. about his sexuality and this and that. Like, he's been out of the game so long, he, he probably still has plenty of money left over. Like, I, I don't know that I'd, if I'm him, like, do you want to jump back into that spotlight? And, well, you, you know, and you, things you, have changed since he was there, right? So social media correct. wasn't a huge, huge thing. <clears throat> By the time it kind of fell out of the spotlight, it, it just kind of was what it was. And now that everybody's up in your ass about everything, like, do you want to come back to that, man? I, personally, I would not. Also, I retired he, he, before all been of this. incredibly reclusive yeah. for almost a decade, where he does not come out of his house. So there's a reason you don't even just see a picture of him walking his dog. Right. I was or, or on the beach or on vacation or doing any other things because he doesn't even want to come out of his house right now. So I, that would be a big deal to just do that. I was about to say, wasn't that like a big story, what, like three years ago? Like, where no is Richard, him, yeah. where is Richard mm-hmm. Simmons? You are going to say Richard Sherman, weren't you? No, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> He's got fat. Jones. He's on Mars, man. We know where we know where Sherman is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can see him a lot on a lot of different things, and uh, on uh, what's it undisputed now? Yeah, and look, it's also not that crazy, right? Like anybody that has older relatives and stuff, like they just don't go out as much as they used to. Yeah, Richard Simmons, I'm sure you spend that much time in the house. Like he, I, I, you know, who knows why he doesn't want to leave the house or go out a ton? But I imagine he probably has a nice house. Probably sits out there mm-hmm. and can. I mean, who knows? Maybe he's been traveling all over and he goes in and out of stuff secretly like uh, Taylor Swift does. I want to say he bought that home like 35 years ago. Yeah, I mean, 40 years. He's, like he's been living off. in the same place. You're in a good place. When he was financially well off. And I'm sure that property is worth a lot of money now, but he's made a ton off of it based on what he paid for it. And also, you know, like I said, it's just an old school guy. So why, if you quote unquote come out of retirement for this to happen, you're going to be subjected to what the world is now, which, frankly, is very stupid, right? Everyone reads into things, makes it bigger. I think it's just like, look, I don't do it when I'm dead. It's a lot different now. And, like, sometimes that's hard for people to fathom, right? Not fathom. It's hard for people to understand and put to use. Right. Like I saw, I think it was the Arkansas, uh, University of Arkansas football coach. He was talking about, I think it's them. I'm not sure. But he has a, he has a punter. From Australia, Aussie rules football. Yeah. So the kid, you know, had some good plays and had some bad ones. And he said the kid was just really down one day. And he's like, look, we talk about mental health a lot. So I said, what's wrong with you? Not, you know, how are you feeling? What's, what's wrong with you? What's going on? And he just said the kid was just like social media. And I just liked that this coach, you know, who's, you know, let's just say 50 years old. He's yeah. just like, look, it is different. He's like, when I was playing, like, you heard stuff, right? But like. You had to have an article written up in your local paper. Right. He's like, you couldn't just mm-hmm. hop on your phone and like, and he picks up a phone. And I agree with him. There's so many great things that comes from from phones. Whether it's just staying in contact with people, have a direction. Absolutely. But there's also a lot of different pressures and things that come from looking at your phone that kids today got to deal with that we didn't. Because well, that's the thing. The public ends up creating your narrative, which is a lot different now yeah. than it was before. And also going back to what you said, that there, there needed to be an article, article in the local paper. Well, also back then, the story needed to be big enough to even be worthy of being on the printed paper. You had to have everything that was right. worth being on there. Nowadays, it's digital. You're not wasting anything. If there's a half, half-ass half story, fart it out there and put it out. You yeah. know? If, I, if, if there's anything that's going to generate any kind of a buzz, any kind of a reaction, just put it out and there. And then everything becomes an editorial. Right. That people costs no we right. saw it, right? We saw it this past weekend, right? With, with college football. Right? Like, I know a lot of people up here hate Oregon, and I get it. You're Washington fans, Washington State fans. But a Washington coach's defense, like, I don't think he said or did anything out of line. Colorado was a dormant program. I like it was yesterday or something in a press conference. He said, look, I got to get my guys fired up, too. So that's what I said in the pregame. It was a quick speech. He goes, I love college football. I'm pumped Deion's down there. Right. Like, let's get everybody watching college football. The effect's been amazing. But, like, mm-hmm. people got to calm down a little bit, too. Like, the, the, you got, he's got to get his team fired up. There's a lot of stuff going on. But if you want the real truth on maybe the Seahawks and Geno Smith, you can watch Inside the NFL tonight over on the CW at 8 p.m. Geno's got a one-on-one interview. Okay. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to The Men's Room. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Man on a honeymoon sends a naked pic of his new wife to his entire contact list. <laughs> Meanwhile, a guy brings a load of gun and carry-on and says, Hey, it's something that my wife must have missed. Tennessee man attacks girlfriend's son after refusing to pay him for yard work. Sheep wander into a greenhouse and all come out wearing a smirk. 
and a drug dealer calls the cops on himself. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. All right, top story. We go to Greece, where a flock of sheep ended up uh, hungrier than they started. Or so they thought. The flock had managed to bust their way into the greenhouse that was on their farm and help themselves to the delicious botanicals inside. While the farmer wasn't exactly pleased with the sheep getting to the crop, it had already been damaged by severe weather and was already slated to not be his best work. His concern is more for his flock, who munched on roughly 600 pounds of marijuana Damn. plants that were being cultivated for medical use. <laughs> yeah. He said they were flying high, too. They really? were doing just fine. I bet they were. <laughs> Bad, dude. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> That's all the sheep. <laughs> That's how they did it. <laughs> you sheep okay? Man, they're really stoned. They're doing great, dude. Bro, you ever notice we just, we look like clouds? I'm up there with them. People are tired, man. They count us. <laughs> <laughs> I was in that Serta commercial. Dude, when humans call someone else a sheep, it's insulting, and yet they like our fluff, brah. <laughs> God, I love effing weed, man. <laughs> I used to vape until I found the greenhouse. Didn't know it was that kind of greenhouse. Damn, this medical stuff Whoa. is the truth. <laughs> Good thing I don't got cancer no more. Hey guys, all of us, ignore the shepherd dog and a piss him off. <laughs> they just don't do anything. Don't look at him. <laughs> he had nothing to do with himself. He's got to bite someone who's getting so mad. Dude, there's no dog. It's a rock. <laughs> <laughs> You've been staring at a rock for 20 minutes, man. <laughs> no sheep are 600 pounds of medical marijuana. 600 pounds of weed. Dude, I don't even know how to say this word. Fritos. What? <laughs> Why do I want something called? I want the wool from those guys. Fritos. <laughs> oh, God. In other news... <laughs> On a similar subject, we go to Florida, where one man is about to get an additional 90-day sentence courtesy of the court of Steve the Thrill Hill. The man called police to report a robbery. He's a traveling salesman of sorts who was unfortunately robbed by one of his customers, a man that snatched $10 from him while agreeing to buy some of his product. Police arrived on the scene to get a report from the man, and the biggest problem is... Our salesman was offering small bags of marijuana for sale. Jesus Christ. Which is still very much illegal in the state of Florida, so yeah. he was arrested. During the arrest, they found more drugs in his wallet, which, uh, which added to the charges. If you deal drugs, do not call the cops. Hey, yeah, you if you're doing something illegal, and that's part of the risk of it. Right. It's the cops, and then also anybody can rob you because you can't call the cops. It's called breakage, Ted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know. Man, if I'm a cop, like I said, I'd be so pissed off. Like, wait a minute. You're a drug dealer, yes, sir. But right. you called me. You called me because someone robbed you. Right. You're getting tased. Because you found somebody for me. <laughs> He's not even doing anything. I'm not, no, sad. I'm tasing you because I'm just angry. Because <laughs> as a human being, that's stupid. Why am I here? To the lovely world of the internet where one man told the story of sharing a little more than he intended to. He and his wife had been enjoying their vacation and, uh, on request of his family, began uploading photos to an online folder for them all to see the lovely time that they were having. He said that it was the usual vacation photos, the beach, their dinners, drinks, hiking, sunsets, and the like. But he accidentally included one photo that left little to the imagination, featuring his wife soaking in the balcony hot tub completely nude. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Luckily for all parties, there was nothing revealing about the photo as it was just her back was turned, but he still felt the need to just share how ashamed that's he why, was. That's why I'm wondering it. why it's a story. Mm. Right. He had to share it. Like, oh, look what I did. Oops. Right. The post was met with words of encouragement and support shortly before it was deleted by moderators. There was also a handful of comments that said exactly what you said, Miles, and I thought the same thing. Dude, just take the photo down. Mm. It was literally yeah. only made a yeah. thing because you made it a thing. We oh, would not have known this. Look what I accidentally he did now I'll tell everyone right who hasn't thought about just going you know going commando in the hot tub whatever dude yeah. Yeah. it's a hot tub have a good old time I I just assume 
Yeah, everybody's done it at least once, right? It's a racy photo of my wife. No, she's topless. It's not like you get side boobies. And it's from the back. Right. That is not racy, you prudish. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And that is it for your headlines. With that, Mike Hawk is out. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Lovely Taryn Daly is up next. We'll see you next time for the return of Who Sucks Less. Less, less, less. Yes, indeed, it's all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch for 180 seconds or so. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man. A double flush production.